Just mic'd up with Mikey Matuk. Got the boys in. I got Lloyd. We got Jay Mitch. We got Jackie Boyd. He tried to jump up, and he might have knocked it in. Good timing. Let's go. What a start to the Monday. Oh, no. <laughs> I mean, I'm from Lafayette. My boys are come in. Say, oh, oh, God. oh, God. So I'm, me and Joel, bro, I got Joel in the headlock. And he's sitting there. He's punching me in the stomach. Like, he's punching me, punching me, punching me. Here. Because everyone's saying, who here thinks Ochenko can practice today after having five full beers? And he goes, Chad Jones, right? Chad Jones. <laughs> Six for, minutes. For seven minutes, ah. right? Chad's like, no, nah, man, I, I don't think Ochenko can practice today. And I was like, I look back, I'm like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> I saw you there. You were more fucked up than me. The only spirit plane had some issues, I think. She was sleep, sleep farting. You heard her or you just thought it was her? I, I sat right next to her. Oh, whoa. What was that? Time to do the show. Oh, Are you gonna bring your chinchilla and your turtle? <laughs> My dad tell you about it. <laughs> <laughs> As you see, is God they hate fat people. <laughs> I mean, I get crushed for that. You know what I mean? It's like, fuck, oh, man. Hey, it's, it's just the south, bro. You got a bunch of food down here. Like they, they should. Oh, just, they're just, they're just, <laughs> Look at. Lloyd. <laughs> you know what, Lloyd? <laughs> You're looking for a recruiting coordinator, coach. I'm here. <laughs> He's like, I'll piss my pants right now. <laughs> no way. We're wearing gray pants, long gray pants. He goes, I'll piss my pants right now. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to Mic'd Up. Today is Wednesday, November 1st. I am officially a vest guy. Lloyd, I don't think Lloyd's ever seen me in a vest, but I'm in a vest. It is vest weather. Long sleeve vest. I feel really good. This weather's been beautiful. It's been glorious. It's gonna that be was glorious. Breckenridge. Huh? That was Breckenridge. Oh, it was great. You know, Ski weather. Zoom there, zoom back. Yeah. Ski for the first time. I was on the bunny slopes. No big deal. Uh, no big deal. Not we, didn't really, we weren't at Breckenridge. We were in, you know, Vail. Vail. Yeah. Yeah. Me and uh, excuse me, flow. Yeah, excuse me, flow. What's the soup du jour? <laughs> mm, sounds good. I'll have that. I'll have that. It's the soup of the day. <laughs> what the hell uh, are you talking about? <laughs> we got a uh, we got a big show today. We what got our boy Jay Mitch, and here he's never seen Dumb and Dumber. Apparently, <laughs> big uh, bumps, huh? Definitely, Lloyd has seen Dumb and Dumber. That's my namesake. Uh, one of the best. That is. Look, that is your namesake. Named right after Lloyd Christmas. Lloyd Christmas. Lloyd Christmas on Halloween. I said Lloyd Christmas, Courtney. Happy like All living. Saints Day. Happy All Saints Day. Uh, I know a lot of people will probably uh, have some hangovers, whether it be from candy and sugar, mm. or whether it be from alcohol because of all the trick-or-treaters coming to your house. Uh, it was a great day to trick-or-treat. It was a little chilly, but you know, if you're running around chasing your kids around, it seems like it would be a pretty good weather day for you. Uh, but we are a sports show. We have a lot to talk about. Obviously, a lot of news has come out over the last couple days since we were last here with you. It's game five of the World Series right now. The Rangers have an opportunity tonight to close it out in Arizona for the first time 
in the history of their organization to become World Series champions. Uh, the Diamondbacks are trying to um, prolong that, try to fight their way back into the series. It's 3-1 Rangers. Uh, Nate Evaldi is on the mound. Apparently he's got, not apparently, he's got some of the best stats, if not the best stats, historically in the postseason. Like he's one of the best postseason pitchers of all time. So he's a good, he's the right guy to have on the mound for the Rangers to close it out. Uh, LSU's own Josh Smith gonna get his way, get his work his way into a ring, which is good for him. Oh, um, you're calling it. Congratulations, potentially, potentially, gonna the get parent. a ring. Um, tune into that. Obviously, it's Wednesday. There's no, there's not any huge football games on. No NFL. No basketball is back. Hockey's making a push. Uh, so, you know, put a yes, put the football. This, this person, Parallel Parkins, uh, not trusting herself. She had more room. She had more room. room. She had more room. room. She had a whole wall. Back there. She wall. had more room. Look, she had more room. She didn't got do room. It. Got room. Got yep. room. Wall. Well, well, you didn't tell me. <laughs> it's too late. And now she's about to get too late. Oh, there she goes. She did it. Good job. Um, let's give her a round of applause. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. It's not done yet. Oh, not done yet. Not done yet. <laughs> not done yet. Wait, wait. Okay, you're good. This is becoming a debacle. You're going the same spot. You're going back and forth. And okay. Oh, oh, she's going back forward again. Does she not know there's a white line up there? <laughs> the brakes. Okay. Are we good? All right, she did it. She did we it. We split it apart. They did it. They did it. Congratulations. That was an adventure. She made the parallel park here at Perkins Row. We're at Cards and Culture. You got backseat driver. Got three in the car. Ah, that's, that's a lot of distraction. And, and, and somebody in the passenger seat. <laughs> not yes. help. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah, a lot of, a lot of, yeah, a lot of drivers in that car right now. But she did it. She yeah. made it. No, no bumps. No nothing. She got there. Um, My neck. College football playoff rankings came out. The first rankings have come out. LSU comes in at 14. People are, some people, not a ton of people, but some people are um, up in arms, <laughs> a little angry that. How did you do that? <laughs> a little angry that Missouri is ranked ahead of LSU. I don't think that is a big deal. Obviously, Missouri has one loss. It is to LSU. LSU has two losses. Uh, I think for LSU, that is a good sign. That is a good thing for them to have Missouri, who is ranked ahead of them. That's their, that's a, that is a big win. What's going on? I'm wondering what's going on with our producer. They were, back, they were, they were that They're was right the, the culprit. They were, look, they were <laughs> staring at us. <laughs> They're staring at us, yeah. Maybe she was trying to stare when she was driving, too. Oh. Yeah, that's, look, that's it. You know, we're distracting It people. wasn't going good. The bright yeah. lights got her. <laughs> uh, but I'm in the camp of, like, I don't think that's such a big deal. You know, I think that is uh, good for LSU. LSU's other two losses are both in the rank of the top ten. Florida State is ranked fourth. So um, they have a uh, – I don't think there are really any huge surprises. LSU's the highest ranked two-loss team in the college football playoffs. They go in this weekend. They take care of business against Alabama. They will put themselves in a position to be in the top ten going into next week uh, with Florida at home and then ending the season at home against Texas A&M. Georgia Southern mixed in. If they lose to Georgia Southern, they don't deserve anything. So, um, you know, I think they're in a, they're in a good spot to – you know, make some make, move. make some waves mm -hmm. in the college football place as we go. Obviously, they got to take care of business themselves. Trade deadline came in and out. Like, it was here, and then it was gone. And the Saints got to, became 4-4 four and four again. They won. They played their best, probably their best game of the year. Off, definitely their best game of the year offensively, uh, minus the doink off of Chris Olave's helmet. Face. Face mask. Um, I do believe that they're going to, like, he is gonna, him and, and Derek Carr are going to get that right. Uh, but they're four and four going into a home game this weekend against the Bears. The Bears are going through their own deal. I don't know. I don't think Justin Fields is going to play. Maybe, um, but they have an opportunity to go five and four. They don't make any moves in the trade deadline, which is okay. You know, I think they have a really talented team. Obviously, I would have loved to see. You don't usually see offensive linemen get moved off in the trade deadline. You see some defensive linemen, Montez Sweat and Chase Young, both gone. Right? Chase Young goes from the Commanders to um, the 49ers, uh, big change, big change. Uh, Come back to play with his college teammate. Really good. Yep, because gets to be on the other end of his college teammate, which is awesome. Um, and then you have Montez Sweat goes to the Bears. That's an interesting move too. Interesting, because the Bears defense hasn't been great, and they were able, they didn't end up not trading their 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 cornerback. So now they have they're kind of building a piece around. Well, they their were defense. buyers with a losing record. That's right. That, like, but also never sellers too at the same time, which yeah. is kind of different. So, but, but it makes sense though because it's 
they traded with they traded away a second round pick for Sweat. They have a is, lot of draft right. capital, but yeah. I, I, I guess in a sense of if you're thinking like, hey, if we can resign him, you would never get him in the second round next year. So go ahead right. and just give up that pick. Right. And I think that's kind of what they tried to do. I think Makes they tried sense. to get that pick back too, though. They were rumored to be trying to get some trying to get something else was going. I forget who it was, but they were rumored to try. I think they tried to get the pick back. Trade deadline, a lot of rumors. A lot of things happening, yeah. could happen, this may happen, this is going to happen, that doesn't happen. Um, but it goes and it comes and goes. Um, LSU women's basketball, they begin their season next Thursday, I believe. It don't feel like the season started today. Hey, I mean, they had some. Major, you talk about moves. Kim, Kim's get moves. some stuff done over there. Kim's Kim A mover is, and a uh, shaker. She's, listen, they, uh, they seem primed. We've talked about this a lot, but they seem very primed right now to win multiple championships in a row. Um, they seem primed to kind of do what UConn did all those years, and I'm here for it. I'm excited about it. Kim Mulkey's done, a, a, done an unbelievable job uh, building that and doing it in a very short time, and now she's reaping the benefits. She's getting new locker rooms for their girls. She's getting uh, hopefully a new PMAC or a new, new arena. Um, whether that be where the track stadium is now and they move the track or they redo the PMAC, seems like from what I've been hearing, it's going to be where the track stadium is and they're just going to use the PMAC as a uh, venue, like a concert venue and like an overflow type thing where like they're going to still have maybe on a bot something. So what like. are they going to do with the track then? They're going to move the track and build a whole new track, which they need to do anyway. Right. Because the track's old and I think they're going to move it to uh, – Downboard baseball. The golf course. Oh, there we go. Okay. Yeah, there'll be no, from what I've been told, I don't know. That golf course is really, it's in good shape, though. They shouldn't do that. Yeah, yeah, they, they, they keep that thing tight. They keep that thing tight. Like, you know, I don't know if you knew when Georgia came a few years ago, uh, they used that as a parking lot. Georgia boosters just, they, yeah. they just, you know, mm -hmm. paid to use that golf course, remember, which is pristine, as a, as a parking lot. Remember so. the old pitch and putt? Yeah, he has some deals. He it's a real deals. shame. But I think it's good. The there's, a lot, yeah, Momentous, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of room out there. There's a lot of area to do a lot of different things. And I think so they're taking away the entire golf course? I don't know. Maybe make All the way to Fred's. Maybe make it a nine-hole course. I don't know what they're going to do. Um, that's just what I've been hearing. Um, <laughs> I did have a friend that hopped a fence at uh, St. Patrick's Day and played that par three across the street. Like, from We're Fred's, Fred's? Yeah. yeah. You just joined up a couple it's people tough that golf. Hit, tough when you're teeing off on that part three and you got people at Fred's on the, on the deck. On the patio. Not what you yeah. want there. <laughs> well, pressure. You better be pressure, locked in, coach. Pressure. You better be locked in. Hopefully you get that thing close Nicholson and nice drive and open right there. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to hit no uh, no chunk and runs on that part you know, three. No, 138 over water? Yeah. Well, you don't want You want to make sure you get over, over the, water the water or before the water. Yeah, lay up. Yeah, you can lay up in the par three if you if want. If people are watching, just hit it, grab an extra club, hit it as far as you can. Put it in the air. Take the driver out. Yeah. You know, actually, maybe not. You Lock know, leg. Do something. Do something. Um, it's also Ask Mikey and Mitch Day, right? It's Wednesday. So it's Ask Mikey and Mitch. We have a special guest coming in studio at 7 o'clock. Jake Brown, freshman, outstanding freshman recruit from Sulphur and like from Sulphur. Went to Sulphur High School around Lake Charles. He was a two two way star, Sorry. left handed pitcher, outfielder slash first base. Was a 16th rounder out of high school. Decided to come to college. Uh, he has been making a very very good impression on the staff this fall. Seems like he's kind of he's getting acclimated really quickly. We've talked to him. We talked to him I think a little bit in Omaha. He's been excited to come on the show. He's going to come on the show um, for the first time tonight. So we're pumped to have some baseball conversation. But before that, we have some football talk. We have, I want to hear everybody's thoughts on college football rankings. I want to hear everybody's thoughts on um, this weekend. You know, obviously we're going to have our show here Friday. We're going to move it back a little bit, 1.30 to 3 instead of 1 to 3. Uh, we usually about two and a half hours, I mean an hour and a half anyway on, the, on that day. So no big deal. Um, Lloyd found a... <laughs> Don't, don't do that. Don't yes, do, that. do it. Just yeah, don't do it Lloyd's to found something. A model. A model. For and betting. not the model, not the good-looking models. It could be. Could be. Found a model. 70%. On the line. <laughs> that is apparently. Self-proclaimed. 70%. Now, they were a YouTube channel. They still are. They still are a YouTube channel. For now. They have a podcast. It is uh, Football Nerds. 
college, college football, football nerds. nerds. They they uh, they have a niche. They've created a model. Or a fetish. They've created. <laughs> they've created a model that Lloyd. I've never used it. Lloyd's never used it. He's about don't to understand it. it at all. And they have a model. I don't know what goes into the model. I don't know what happens with the model. I don't have know, you ever cheated on a test? They say they are seventy percent. Boy, this sounds like a bunch of bullshit. Uh, listen, <laughs> coach. You know what? And I'm gonna fall right into it. And I'm gonna Me try too. It. And so apparently, what you, you want to get is, rich quick? What you do is you put in the teams. They give you a model. You put in the teams. Okay, LSU versus Alabama. Go and you Alabama say Benton. what the model spits out based off of what they've done throughout the course of the year, uh, and it spits out the per score prediction and what they what their model says it's gonna be. Their model says Alabama is going to beat LSU by one point. It was like 33.8 to 32.8 or 32.8 to 31.8 or whatever it was, which means one, the over 60 looks good. Uh, the LSU plus three looks good. Really? The LSU winning doesn't look good according to their model, but one point, anything can happen. Uh, oh, also, five tenths of a point. Huh? Five tenths of a oh, point. Oh, five tenths of a point. There you go. So not really. Yeah, yeah so it's, it's an a, extra point. It's a coin flip. It's a coin flip there. Uh, they also have Georgia – Georgia is favored by 15 or 14 points, I think, to Missouri. You put that model prediction in there for the Georgia-Missouri game, and uh, they have Georgia winning by, I think, seven points or six points. So, you know, if you're looking into that, if you believe into that, believe that, then try it. I'm going to try it. I'll let you know what happens. We can't shouldn't get, have told I anybody. What, I can't get worse than, I've been, than I have been right now. I'm a little cold also. It's just college football. The model – for Georgia, Missouri is 32-25. So, so 14 seven, and a seven. half, you feel great. Seven points. I mean, like, you have Jay. You just got your cut, catching Jay not doing anything. Look at that. That's very mean of you. I think he's putting in bets. I don't think he's using I'm that model. I'm looking at the model, actually. <laughs> yeah, see? <laughs> see? See? That's see? what I'm telling you. That doesn't, um, that doesn't mean I'm dipping into it. <laughs> my, last, my last gambling. He's about to judge it so hard. My last bet that I made <laughs> that has happened, that has finished, was the Monday Night Football. I took those player props. You know, obviously the Raiders laid a huge egg, huge egg, and uh, so much of an Jimmy egg Graham, that they traded. Even, you know, Jimmy Graham, Jimmy Graham, they probably need Jimmy Graham. Jimmy Garoppolo, not anywhere close to the over the passing attempts, and uh, who's the receiver from Devontae Adams? Nope, the other one, Jacoby Myers. He didn't get to his over, so I didn't win the parlay. And then because of that, because I did not win the parlay, they fired everybody. So they fire the head coach, they fire their GM, and bench Jimmy Garoppolo. So the Raiders are making some big moves. Uh, that's, that is uh, world champion, WNBA world champion, Mark Davis, making those that's moves. That's right. Yep, that's what Lloyd said. Lloyd said at least he won a championship. Yeah, and that's true. Did. That's true, he did. He is a owner of the Las Vegas Aces. Just win, baby. Just win, baby. Now, hopefully they can take that winning culture and bring it back to Oakland. Uh, I saw a graphic today where they're showing all Las these... Vegas. What did I say? I said Oakland. Oakland. Did I? Yeah. Or did I say the Raiders? You said Oakland. Las Vegas Raiders. I'm sorry. The Sphere. I apologize. The Sphere. Um, I saw a graphic today that shows all of the coaches that have been fired midseason since, you know, however long. Raiders had three of them on there. That's not great. It's not ideal. I saw some numbers that had... Jimmy Garoppolo compared to Jamarcus Russell, which no, yes, and their however many starts they've had for the Raiders, their numbers were very comparable. Yeah, yeah, but you can't do that because Jimmy Garoppolo's had a career. Like Jimmy Garoppolo had games where he won, and yeah, put put J Rock in the Kyle Shanahan system. Ain't happening. He ain't doing it. He ain't doing it. You believe the slander? Slander. Slander. This. I mean, he's got to watch. He didn't watch any film. He didn't do anything. He, 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 Put him in slander. A, it's slander. slander. You tell me he didn't watch Jimbo's offense. He was watching film. He's a he's a game. I mean, he was a player. great athlete. Prom time player. What? Show, show your hands. They're all nimbly, bimbly, and broken and well, bones. I don't know nothing about film here. Oh, what you mean? <laughs> um, football show. Another thing that's happening this weekend slander. is uh, red zone style college football coverage. All the night games. Reese Knights Davis Knights. is going to be the Scott Hansen of college football. Chris Hansen. With a guest star. Why do I say Scott Hansen all the time? It is Scott Hansen. Okay. Thank Chris you. Hansen is the to catch a predator. I know. Or Bachelor. No. Or the pop star. Yeah. Chris Hansen? Come up. Is he the bachelor right. person? 
Scott Hansen is to catch a predator. Which one's in the family of the childhood Sc- Who's the Who's the red zone one? No, God. It's Scott Hansen. We're in a pickle. Scott. I uh, see. This is see. Lloyd just makes these. Yeah, the Bachelor. Scott there. Hansen. Scott Hansen. So who's the Who's the red zone guy? Something Hansen. Chris Hansen is to catch a predator. Come have a seat right over here. I don't care about that. Who's the red zone guy? Red zone host. It's probably still the wrong name. For Scott that. Hansen. Okay. He does both. Yeah, two Scott Hansons. Same Actually, guy. The so Pam Pam. The Pam Pam, Pam Pam dilemma. I think I can help with I think that. I can help. Yeah. Um, who are you? <laughs> um, I think she was a little fucked up. Is that up. Dumb and Dumber too? Uh, Step Brothers. Brothers. <laughs> um, big white comedy show. <laughs> what? <laughs> What do y'all think? You think it's going to be a good... Uh, uh, I've been screaming Roaring for this. success. Yeah. It's only the night games. Well, it's that's not it. all day. It's ease the way in, baby. It's like uh, when a restaurant rolls out a, like a tasting menu. Like only family and friends get to come. And like, let's see how a soft, soft open. opening. That's what they would call that. Yes. Yes. Someone in the biz, as I know. Yes. It's a soft opening for the night games. I hate that it's the LSU. McAfee's got something to do with it too, right? Yeah, he's going to be a part of it. They're going to do the whole gambling cave. Like all of their... Yeah, that whole crew is going to be on it, but Reese Davis is steering the ship, which is, is what Reece they need. Reese Davis going to the studio? Yes. Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. I like it. I, I love think it. Be good. Me too. That's gonna be good. I won't see a second of it, but like if they'd have done this any week other than LSU Alabama, well, I'd be I mean, all keep in. They're going to doing it. I imagine. Right. So. But it just feels like a bad weekend to roll it out, just from from, from like your LSU's, perspective. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think everybody's going to be tuned into LSU Alabama. Well, you could probably want, to, but this is a well. Here's what's going to happen. Here's what's going to happen. It's only going to be ESPN games. Right. But what's LSU Alabama on? CBS. Okay. So are they going to be able, is YouTube TV going to be able to do the side by side? Good question. I don't know. I don't have YouTube TV. So maybe that would be a thing. I don't know. Who knows? But it's going to be interesting. I'm looking forward to seeing it. Um, Like I said, any other weekend other than this weekend, I'm sure ESPN has a bunch of good games. So it makes sense. And even if they don't, if it's a total calamity, then. Not that big a deal. You didn't miss anything. Hard for me to believe it'll be that, though. It'll yeah. at least be serviceable. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It'll be. Yeah. Well, if they, they had some troubles on game day on Fridays because some of the people in the ESPN truck didn't want to do both with McAfee. And they're like, we don't want to. We didn't get paid to do this twice. And he's like, look, I'm just showing up. I, I have nothing but respect for you people. As somebody on the production end. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody, it's got to it's fall on somebody. Tough. Tough. But I hope it's fun. Like yeah. we've been, we've been clamoring for a red zone slash college football something because I get caught up in not being able to find every game as somebody that doesn't have YouTube TV with the multi view. They probably saw that as a model. It was like multi view is great, it's right? But what was I saying? Whenever you showed it to me, I was like, I wish they had an easier way to get to each voice. And now if you put Reese Davis on there, yeah, but you do. You just slide the cursor over to the other one that gets the voice. Yeah, but now I have Reese Davis that just tells me where to go. He just what? pulls in the screen. Like, it'll go from multi-view to huh? the game. Yeah, like the red zone does. Exactly. That's what I want. Yeah, yeah, right. Of course. Of course. But, like... They're asking me to pay too much attention. What, I mean, what else are you there to do? You want to see all the big Twitter? plays. And you want, to see the, you want to see bits and pieces. Maybe someone wants to watch a full game but have four full games and they can just watch them. I'm a full like, game just, guy. Give me yeah, the me full too. game. Me too. Like me too. Me too. Um, Ready, Ellison. Speaking of, I hope LSU can play a full game this weekend. You know, it's a uh, you know, it's monumental matchup. It's a always a monumental matchup. You know, they we have talked about on Monday where they're not. They have announced that the three cornerbacks, Zion Alexander's obviously banged up, not playing, and then uh, Denver Harris and Deuce Chestnut are no are not available this weekend. So opens up a lot of opportunity to some younger guys to get in there and kind of make a name for themselves and make some plays. I'm interested to see how they're going to structure this defense with the lack of lack of depth and experience in the secondary. Obviously, we've talked about this for a long time, for the last couple weeks. That's what the bye week does for you. Um, but now that it's game week, you know, I think that, you know, maybe there's some other storylines. ESPN did a really good story on Jaden Daniels. I missed it. I haven't seen it yet. Me either, but I saw p- bits and pieces. I haven't seen the whole thing. <laughs> I've seen bits and pieces of it though. Yeah, and it looked really cool. And like you know, some of the stuff that I've I have seen, I haven't like gone through it, you know, in detail. But uh, looks like they did a really good job. And they did a you know, really good job. I haven't seen it. Well, I saw bits and pieces. It's the little that I saw of it. 
seems like he did a really good job. And, you know, Rinaldi's doing it. So old town. You'd imagine tearjerker. It's going to be good, right? And so, you know, this is the first step of college game day. The Jaden Heisman train. And you go out and you have a bit, you're going to get a lot more hype around Jaden now going into the game, prime time, in front of everybody, win the game. All of a sudden, Jay, I mean, he's, he's shooting up. He's shooting up the odds. Uh, yeah, mock Heisman drafts odds. as well, too. He's shooting up mock, mock drafts as well. I, so I think maybe off the athletic, I think he's like the fifth rated um, qu- uh, quarterback uh, prospect right now. Really? Behind Drake May. It's, Caleb Williams. It's, it's Drake Michael May, Penix. Caleb Williams. Oh, Drake May's first? Yeah. Oh, this this is of the athletic, and I don't know if it was theirs or if they took it from someone else. Yeah. I'm not exactly sure I went, but it was Drake May, Caleb Williams. Somebody was third. Shadur Sanders Michael was fourth. Penix. And then he was fifth. I was like, huh? Oh, it might have been Penix. That was third. Yeah. So he's flying up that at least. Yeah. People and I think he to, goes out and beats Alabama again. Yeah. And has a good game. I think you're going to start seeing that, you know, the helium happening a little bit more than it has yeah. been. and. That's my question to you. No matter that you saw Brian Kelly come out with the, he got asked about the Heisman Award where he said it's a body of work trophies. Like if he goes out and throws, you know, three interceptions against Alabama, it doesn't mean that his chances for the Heisman ever, because he got asked directly about it. He would Who never. Who said this? Uh, Brian Kelly. Yeah. And so he's saying it's a body of work trophy, but I would have to push back and Disagree say. With that. This is the moment. If he's going to win the Heisman, he has to not only play well. I could say he could play poorly and win and still be in the conversation. It is a body of work. It's supposed, it's supposed to, be to be a body of work award. You go and you lose the three biggest games you've played all year. That's not going to get you. The, Toss the apple. You know, and I would, I would argue, disagree with you. I think even if LSU does win, he has a bad game. I, don't, I mean, I think he's going to be in the well, Heisman they, contention, but I don't so, think he'll win it. I, like, I believe it is, it's 100% a body of work award, but that doesn't necessarily mean that your numbers in that body of work has to be the best. Like, right. you, if you go back to years when, like, I don't know, say somebody like Troy Smith, Ohio State, won it. I, I think if, if we went back and looked, I would imagine that his numbers in all of those years weren't necessarily the best. But when you watched him play in those big games, he was – intricate to whatever and how and everything that they did in those games so i would imagine that thought process of it is a thing but the the numbers that Jaden's put out this year have been ridiculous yep. obviously but like you said we can't keep putting the brightest lights on him and this team and they keep faltering but somehow he wins that award it just won't happen that way so yeah it is a it is time for it to start being where these games happen you play well and you walk away with a win for it to actually so mean going something. back to the defensive side, you know, you know, like obviously the secondary is an issue, right? Yeah. For me, if you look at Alabama's numbers, like the stats of their offense, not great. Their offense isn't as dynamic or even close to as dynamic yeah. as LSU's, right? And their passing game isn't great. They're pro- they're about 68th and uh, in efficiency. Yeah. Right. But fifth in the country in explosive passing play rate. Which means they don't, they're not very efficient on, um, they're not very efficient on uh, throwing the football consistently. But when they do make, make, make the completions and make the plays, they're big plays down the field yeah. and they're making explosive plays. They uh, are third, Milrose third in the country in yards per attempt. Yeah. They, they, they're not a team that's going to be able to short game and or intermediate throw the ball down the field, up and down the field, 12 play drives, kill you on third down and you can't get off the field type of team. What they are going to do, though, is they, whether it's by design or by him breaking the pocket, breaking contain and finding a way, is they've found ways to hit shot plays this year. That is what you have to be able to stop them from doing at some point this game. Right. Is being able to stop them from hitting these shot plays and or getting the PIs that's going to keep – um, prolonging these drives so they can stay on the field. If you find a way to do that, I feel very good about LSU winning this game if they could find a way to do that because for the first time in a long time, I think we can all say this. We, I don't even think we could say this last year going into this game. But for the first time in a long time, I feel like, hey, the offense is going to do more than enough. Can you stop them enough on defense to win the game? 100%, right? And so I'm looking at this. LSU, it says, is 96 and rush, like the efficiency of the rush defense. Now – um, you know, the stats that I'm looking at, you know, it's talking about the Missouri and Ole Miss games, right? They were able to gash LSU in the running game. 
Um, but I think the defensive line right now is complete is, is a different defensive line than they were those two games, right? Um, you see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Okay, just spin it to me. This one? Yes. We're trying to, we're, we're, you know, is it going to matter? Yeah, that's better. As long as it's not. I saw what you were doing. Yeah, there we go. I just didn't want people looking at it and getting a blinding eye on their, you know, with the lamp. Um, but what I was saying is I think that rush, those rush numbers are a little skewed. Now, obviously, they, they gave up the run. They gave up those numbers, right? That happened. Like, those two games gave up a, lot, a bunch of rushing yards. I think the defense, the defensive line has made some adjustments. Linebackers have made some adjustments. So I think the, the run defense is a little bit better. Alabama doesn't have a great running, rushing defense. Their offensive line has struggled. Um, you know, so it, it comes down to, hey, are you going to be able to stop them from making the big plays or the top? Force yeah. Milrow to make these intermediate throws, not the deep balls I, I, and just the not intermediate gotta, throws. To me, like, I just – I I would put a lot of money on, like I said, him not continuously over and over hitting – deep comebacks, deep ends over the middle of the field and being able to play within that structure like that all game long, it's going to come down to, like, I don't see – the defensive front's not going to get gashed like they got gashed against Missouri. But when that doesn't happen, now are you not going to give up the home run over the top that they you know, right. try to create? Right. I, I really do think, like, this is going to come down to a LSU secondary. Can you make the handful of plays or less – that's going to matter when it comes down to the end of the game. Yep, yep. Um, and I would say even if you try, like there's been a lot of discussion about whether to bring pressure or not, which I'd, I'd imagine that's what y'all were talking about. Whenever you get Alabama in third and long or second and long, it hasn't seemed to matter because of what Jared just said. They still can rip off shot plays of like explosive plays of 15 yards or more. Whenever it seems to happen, it happens. Like I don't know if that's something you want to – Live by the sword, die by the sword type of well, deal. I, I think, but it uh, seems to be pretty continuous in their offense. No, it is. That's that's. I mean, that's how they've made a. That's how they made their their, their living this year. I'd love to see a thirteen play drive and you try to score right, that, that way. I, I think that's how you got to try to. Like, I, I do think if you can get them behind the sticks on first and second down, that might be the time where you actually try to put some pressure on them. Yeah. Right. But other than that, man, you got those three young kids or three guys that are out in the defense, really four, four, if you're talking about Greg as well. Right. You got four guys out in the defensive secondary, man. Like it's hard to go and ask them to just keep putting them on an Island by themselves and keep sending so much pressure. You're going to have to simplify it and make them beat you by continuously just driving it up the field, no doubt. hitting balls over the middle. They're going to, you got to, you're going to have to beat them by doing that. I'm not sure Alabama can do that. And it's, a lot of what you haven't seen yet this year is, um, I would not say yet this year, but recently, is Milrow running. They did it a lot um, against Ole Miss, wherever Milrow was a, a, like a focus on their offense to rush the ball. They didn't do it a lot against Tennessee because he was banged up. You get the bye week, and now you have a, probably oh, yeah. a fully healthy Milrow where you're going to see him. He, I think he carried it 14 times against Ole Miss. Yeah. You'll probably see a number like that against yeah. LSU where they're going to make him yeah. – Kind of be a runner. Yeah, it, w- it would make sense for them to get him involved into design runs this game a lot more. And they did a little bit against yeah. – for Tennessee, it wasn't so much him running, but a lot of pop passes, yep. stuff underneath where it's involved and it's, there's an action off of it yep. that you'll probably see against LSU. As, as weird as it is, and it's obviously usually not – it's usually the opposite way around. I think what's absolutely huge for LSU on the defensive side of the ball in this game is how good they are on first and second down. Not even so much how good they are on third down how good they are on first and second down, and can you get them into being super predictable super early into the drive? Like right. That's, that's what's going to be huge for them. I week. mean, it's just you can't you – can't, there's no letting up, if, right? Like you can't just say, oh, we've done it, we've done it, we've done it, and then let up for a little bit, and then boom, you get well, the big Well, that's play. the thing, dude, cause, because like if you can't get them into second and long because they were behind the six on first, if you can't get them in the super third and long because you – like if you keep getting them in the third and shorts and – now he's run the ball 13, yep. 14 times last week, and he's a threat to run, and they also can hit you over the top. I promise you, you let, the, you let them take eight yards on first down, they'll put it in the stomach of the running back, and they'll try to take one off the top of you right there. Why? Because, well, we got two more plays where we got this guy who can run, we got running backs who can run to get this first down. Sure. They'll the, do that all day. The, the shorter you have on second down and third down, or second down, the more likely you're going to have shots being yep. taken. Right? Yep. They're gonna have, that's, that's, the, that's the down and distance. That's the recipe. To yeah, throw the ball deep and take a, take a chance to get over the top of the defense. Um, 
the formula, the model. Our model. The model has it pretty tight. Half a point in the model. And the over. And the over. I've already taken the over 60. Has it gone up? I wonder There's if it's 16 going and a half. Okay, it's gone up half a point. point, which is still a huge half point, it's and you can't buy bet. it down right it's now. It's probably my bet. I probably, my bet probably pushed it to Yeah, the, oh, big numbers? Yeah. Shark. No, no definitely not. <laughs> definitely not. A uh, whale. It is Ask Mikey and Mitch. We, uh, we're going to have a shorter my Ask Mikey and Mitch segment because we have a guest coming in at 7. So, um, and we need some questions. We need some questions. That is the other thing, right? We don't have a lot of questions. That's okay. They did have some... Uh, from what I heard from the neighbors yesterday is that they had a teacher in service today on Halloween post, I guess, All Saints Day, where they didn't have to go to school either. Some of the, ki- the kids, kids, kids are, did not. No, the teachers called it a, like they took a day, but they said teacher in service for like, I guess, like internal scouting. You know, something like we're going to look at ourselves, see how we're doing. Ain't no way. So wait, teachers and kids are off of school today? Yeah, because wow. the, te- the kids get off because the teachers are like, hey, we're taking a... All Saints Day, is that like a Catholic school holiday? Or no? No, no it feels like it'd be a big day of service. Yeah, you, everybody goes to Mass. On her knees all day. Well, Jesus. Praying. I mean, yo, what are you... That's what our... We had a nun that said that because we were going to a football game. It was a playoff game. She's like, a priest is like, Sister Jean has been on her knees all day. Praying, and they got a big laugh. I don't think he meant for it to be. Obviously, he did not. I would imagine he didn't mean for but it. But the comedic laugh. silence was deafening until I laughed. But see, you were, you were definitely the, the leader. <laughs> in the, you were definitely the leader in the clubhouse for that laugh. There's I can not believe a he said. question in my mind about that. Um, got all fifty-three to go with me. Take it easy, Shaq. <laughs> the, the, the spy guy, Michigan Manifesto Marine spy guy for Michigan, is, Central Michigan spy guy. It, yeah, apparently Central. Michigan guy works spy for guy. everybody. Boy, this story is. <laughs> This getting, story is kind of like uh, it's getting deeper and deeper. I right mean, now. it's it's a thirty for thirty waiting to happen. Oh, uh, this is it's starting to make sense why there was a 600 six hundred page manifesto <laughs> written now. <laughs> this is a documentary six years from now. Yeah, like this wasn't just signs he wrote down in that six hundred page. This is starting to make a lot of sense right this now. This man's sneaking on to sidelines, videoing with, with a video sunglasses, that's wearing a, sunglasses at nighttime with a little camera, in green them. camera thing, and it's videoing. That's a then. Cool. The ball comes. The, the guy comes off the sidelines into the into the kicker net, and the camera is looking at it from the aerial view. He notices it and puts his head down with his hat down, so oh, they can't see me. But once you notice him, he couldn't look more suspicious. Boy, this is Harbaugh's Harbaugh's contract is back on the table. Back on the table. Harbaugh's gonna be in Vegas next week. If, I was next about year, to this say thing that. Keeps going like this. Vegas. That's where he's gonna be. Vegas. If it keeps going like this, he's gonna be in Vegas next Vegas, year. Vegas. He might be there before the end of the year. Listen, if he keeps going Mark this Davis way. is gonna be excited. Listen, Bill Belichick <laughs> did it at New England. He had the Spygate stuff over there. Like he's Spygate, trying to deflate gate. He's trying to do things to win. And Jim Harbaugh is actively searching for the NFL. It seems like he's always flirting. He's always, I want to go, I want to go, but. On National Signing Day, he was interviewing for an NFL job. It feels like he wants That's what I would do. either the right, the right job. <laughs> I don't know if the Raiders are the right job, but maybe they have some pieces in place. You still have a top receiver in the, in the, in the league, and then you go out well, there. Maybe. And, <laughs> listen, I mean, if the Raiders keep losing and they go get a top quarterback, you can go, hey, this is a, that's what Jim Harbaugh is. He's a quarterback. So you go there, and you can put your offense in there. Maybe. Maybe. Just him and uh, J.J. McCarthy just go ahead and fly there together and stay JJ. there together. <laughs> Wait, well, could you imagine if the Raiders had a top five pick and you took J.J. over the other guys because that's who you coached at Michigan? That'd if they take move. J.J. in the top five, that would be ludicrous. That'd be, could, that'd could be you a imagine fireable if, offense day one. Could you imagine if he doesn't take him, how that relationship would just go? <laughs> hey. I me. mean, it seems, like, it seems like the Raiders' relationships with their coaches aren't good anyway. No, not great. That brings the other point. Bill Belichick, his coaching tree has been severely – has not been good. Like, they've all had a bunch of jobs and going different places, but they've all stunk. There's only been one coach that he's coached that's coached under him that has a winning record, and that's Bill O'Brien. Hey, I, I heard an interesting point today. It was brought up. I don't, And I would love to source it. I just don't remember what show it was on. Like, Wait, I do have a question. Mcdan- oh, McDaniel was a Denver fired and then yeah. Oakland fired. Yeah. Okay, stay I would off, love to reference it. That. I just don't remember what show it was brought up on. But of that coaching tree that's not doing well, does it start to make you not know, like for the last since 
Brady left, goes to Tampa, wins the championship. Bill just been getting flamed ever since. Does it make you think now, like, well, damn, was Bill actually doing it all? Because none of these coaches are going to have success anywhere. So was he actually doing it all? Was he better than what we thought or, he was? Or do you think that Tom was the guy? Right? I mean, Tom, Tom doesn't play defense then. No so, doubt. You're right. <laughs> You're right. But, like. The, um, maybe, like, was it more so the marriage of Tom and Bill together that had the machine rolling more than it was just one or the other and or anybody else in the building? That's what it makes you want. Yeah, maybe. And maybe those guys aren't – maybe all the coaching tree guys just weren't head coach guys, and they were like, hey, you got, I got to listen to our – I got to listen to Darth Vader. Indian, not Chiefs. And I got to do – yeah, I got to do what he tells me to do. But yeah. what he tells me to do is going to be good. I know how to coach the position or coach what I'm supposed to do. You know, I don't know. I don't know. Tough. I mean, like, some of those have been, like, ugly. Yeah, like, the Patricia, Nobody. the Joe Judge. Did he brought Daniels Patricia. twice. Hugh oh. Jackson. Wasn't Hugh Jackson? Hell. No. no, no, no. Hugh Jackson wasn't there. Who but, was the other guy that coached at the, uh, for the Browns? Someone went there from the Browns. Saban? I don't know. No, there's another guy under the, oh, anyway. Um, just Joe, make, Ju- Joe Judge. That's what I'm saying. It just makes me think about the like the ones that have been just absolutely ugly. Like just bad. Yeah. I mean, Detroit fired a head coach that had a winning record for Matt Patricia because apparently he was like the best ever, and that one was Jim Schwartz. Super fake. Jim. Jim. Jim a, Schwartz, who Jim's tried a, to shake Jim's Jim Harbaugh's John Harbaugh's hand. Do you remember that when he was in the NFL? And you sprinted across the field and slapped him on the back. And mm-hmm. he was a good game. And he was like, this guy's an absolute maniac. If Joe Schwartz was coaching, that would be an issue. No. If Joe Schwartz was coaching the I Detroit what, Lions. If Joe Schwartz is coaching in football, oof. That'd be tough. Boy, Big Jim fan. Schwartz. Jim Schwartz. Hell, I'll take Joe. Maybe they're related. Coach Somewhere. pedigree. Yep. From God's eyes. Um, I'm pulling up some Ask Mikey and Mitch. As we got some we questions. Continue. Thank you. Yes. Appreciate that. We appreciate that very much. First uh, couple wound up from Twitter as we go, as we roll. Hold on. Dun, 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 dun. Ask Mikey Mitch. It's brought to you by our friends at Heineken Silver. 94 calories, 4% alcohol. Great. 21 tail- questions. Well, great for 21 questions. Great for tailgating. Great for uh, just drinking a beer outside if you're watching the game at the house. I'll be doing that this weekend. Maybe not mine. What house. is your plan? I got to go to New Orleans for a one-year-old birthday party. You my, don't have to do my, that. It's my niece. I have to. It's my sister's kid. I have to do it. You know, it's just part Quick of the Quick take. Deal. Will a one-year-old remember if you were there no, or not? nothing. She'll remember nothing. It's not for her. It's for my sister. It's her first kid. It's just one of those things where you just got to do You it. just know. You know what it is. Yeah, and you know so you go is. there. And so I'm going to If you didn't yet. go, what's the wrath? What? Like, how long are you in the doghouse? I would feel bad if I didn't go. Oh. It's not about the wrath. I would feel bad. I'm very Lloyd, basically what he's saying is just for future reference, if you have a family member or someone that's very close to you and there is a first birthday for their kid, you need to be there. That's yeah, first kid especially. <laughs> first kid. That's what, that's what he's trying to tell you. So I would go for y'all. Just make sure you Not during Bama week. but Thanks. Well, I mean, the game's going to happen before, it's gonna happen before the game. A little so it's s- not during the game. So I don't know yet if we're staying in New Orleans to watch the game or not. If we are, if we're not, we're coming back in. We'll probably watch the game in the neighborhood like we normally do. On the road games because somebody somewhere is having something happening for the game. Would you go to Alabama for the game? Have you ever been to Tuscaloosa? Yeah, not for an LSU game though. Really? I was there for a visit, a football visit. Oh, I know that. No, a football visit, not a baseball. Like I was there watching LSU, Alabama Ole Miss. I got a visit to go watch when I was playing at a castle on my arm, but I was there. And what year? 2007. Oh, so Saban's first like, year. Yeah, yeah, they weren't good. No, he's, he's very sleepy. Very sleepy. Six and sleep. six that year, I think. Uh, yeah, something like that. Very I sleepy they stadium. They, the they did. Okay. Very uh, sleepy stadium. What's up, dude? What's up, dude? We, uh, you can just sit on down. We're just gonna be talking. We're not gonna pan to you yet. We're just gonna get there at around seven. We're gonna ask, answer some questions and then you can hang he's out with Jay the boys. You go with that? Time. Yeah, he's on Jay Johnson time. Yeah, Jay. Uh, he's prompt. Jay's got these guys locked in. <laughs> Lockstep. Oh. Uh, what was, no, what was, no, yeah, I've been there once, but not for an LSU game. I was there for a visit, and that's what it, it was sleepy. I went for it's the not, game of the century. Somebody, an Alabama fan was just in my seat. He didn't have a ticket, and he's like, what are you going to do about it? And wow. I and called, you, bit, you bitched out. Oh, I called security immediately. He, <laughs> you bitched out. <laughs> You're so soft. 
<laughs> well, I'm not missing the game. You're so sorry. No, he That's, tried to bait not me. Not what dude. I expected. He goes, oh, I call security. Was he, uh, <laughs> was he like, uh, here's your typical gump, dude. Like, <laughs> this head, like, you know, not everything there. Okay. Not everything here. And I was like, bro, you Savvy, not. though, he snuck in and got us a free ticket. You yeah, wanted none saw- of the smoke, so you said, you know what? I'm no, I, watch this I, game. I, yeah, that's why. Yeah. I was like, I got two whiskeys in my drawers. I ain't, <laughs> look, neither one of us are doing this. You're just going to have to go. And he went. No, that's not How long said. did that take? You went to the security guard and said, hey, can you please security! get him out of here? Because that's my seat. Yeah, and, and he smelled bad. Look, you should, that's good. I'm glad you got to do that. I was a bigger game. man. Some people would Nine say that. Nine to six. You should have looked for him after the game and said, ha, ha, ha. Yeah, what happened? Well, I, he was probably in jail. Maybe so. All right, let's get to these questions. Let's answer them. We, have, we don't want to keep our special guests waiting. All right. Whoa. Whoa. What? It's a baseball question. First uh, one up. How was second base shaping up? Are Pearson and or Kling viable options there? From Arthur what? Jermillo on Twitter. Pearson and Kling? I don't know why. I, I'm just reading what they wrote. How will second base go? Um, I don't think Pearson. I don't think Kling, Pearson. He's a left uh, yeah, hand. Right. <laughs> left hander? I mean, well. Playing left field? I, I just don't think. I that's think the, if that answer. if that were to be a thing, I think that would be it says two B last of which last would be second base. Yeah, so yeah, that's, what he means. that's what he means. I think if that's what if that's how somehow is it first off, it's not gonna be Pearson. But it's <laughs> not gonna if, be clean. Yeah, it's not gonna be clean. It's not gonna be clean either. But if if But maybe. I don't know. But if he can tell us on if that's last resort. There ain't no way that's Welcome to the show. He want, welcome to the show. <laughs> uh, I'll say first off. Jake Brown. Jake Brown chiming in, in to the question. Uh both Josh and Paxson have actually been taking ground balls at practice, just moving around, trying wow. to, uh, try, Breaking trying news. to find a spot where they can help the team. And Versatile. A bit yeah. Agile. Show those guys the work ethic that they have. No and doubt. And that's the, that shows you what baseball is at now, right? Like, the more positions you can play, the more versatile you can be, right. the better you are for a team. So, yeah, no Arthur, Arthur is uh, – Jared Miller. He is – Plugged in. Plugged Plugged in. Going to He's watching. He's, got, he's definitely He's scouting. Right there. He's yeah. scouting for us. Something you got to get used to. Look, and this is a good insight. This is all yeah. stuff that we're going to talk about. More about you whenever we get to your time. But, you know. I love him. He showed up early. Yeah. Hey, he showed show up early. You're right to the fire. They're, they're coming yeah. at you right now. I <laughs> practice came straight here. I was like, I got nothing better to do. Let's go. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. Let's go. I love that. I love that. How was practice? It was good. It was great. Good. Good. We got any more questions? Yes, we do. Okay. Lloyd's back to not vetting them, too, by the way. Uh, <laughs> no, the, 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 look, I'm not going to throw anybody under the bus. And but, to answer your question, Pearson's a lefty hitter. Lefty hitter. Yeah, I you, know. I remember the catch in left field. Okay. And All I right. saw the glove, the buzz. I saw it. Goes on your left hand. So there is with this one. Is that, that's wow. what happens. I'm glad you know that. You, wow. Yeah, you're a fake you? baseball fan. You act like you love Don't baseball you so much. Don't you fucking dare with LSU baseball. Whatever. I and went to Omaha more, me or you. Okay. Ask the question. He went to more games, me or you. Ask it. In your history? No, just okay. last year. Yeah, you? I think you had well, to go. You're part of the family now, so it doesn't really matter. That's true. <laughs> That's it. Next question. Jay did tell me. He's like, hey, get back in the fam. I'm missing you. Did he tell you that? Yeah, he did. Good for you. Yeah. Next question. We interviewed question. him in person. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> <laughs> Who plays quarterback this weekend with all of our guys missing? Jay. From Matthew on Twitter. <laughs> quarterback? quarterback? Corner. Oh, I was like, wait a minute. It was just from I thought he Jayden. said quarterback too until he finished the rest of it. I'm like, oh, okay, I know what he said. Uh, who plays cornerback? I mean, Josh Pearson. <laughs> uh, I mean, Welch is going to play. You think? He has to. I mean, Stamps has to play. Stamps has to play. He's got. Welch he's has the to, one they guy. They all have to play. You can't just have two guys and not play the rest. Like you're going to have to have to rotate some guys in. Who's going to start is different than who's going to play. Yeah, it's a different. Agreed. Question. Yeah. Um, I think, I mean, I think anybody, any warm body that's out there that feels like they can go out there and co- cover somebody, they're playing. Yeah, I think uh, whoever gets the start, I don't really think that's going to hold much weight this week, but I do think it's going to be a nice rotation of bodies trying to keep us a little fresh. And, and listen, if, if you catch fire with one of them, they're that's, playing really well. That's they may the stay ticket. out there for a while. That's, that's the that's, ticket. That's what I'm guessing. One of them needs to be. The one that's on the field always. I don't even know if it. I don't even know if it needs to. I think it would be great, obviously. But yeah. I, I do think. Uh, yeah, I think you're gonna see it kind of get rotated around, and some guys get some chances and some opportunities. What do you do if they go five wide? They put all of them out there. I don't know if they got five. Well, they, if you they, if they went five wide, you wouldn't have five cornerbacks. You'd have to. You'd have like Sage playing Nick. You'd have. I mean, you'd Sage have. Sage corner. 
now. Yeah, but you'd have like that. You'd have nickels and you'd have safeties playing. They got That's what they're going to have to do. Don't They'll worry do about it. They'll, do, they'll figure it you, out. Do you really think in that building they're sitting there right now like, man, I really hope they don't go five wide. We don't have enough bodies for this right now. No, they do. No, yeah, they that'll be fine. They may not be super, super, super confident in all but of them. But they got them. They, they got, got them. them. They'll they be out there. They're there. Next question. Brian Kelly said they're not, they're not freshmen anymore. They're not. We talked about We've been talking about it. this Monday. All right. Ask Mikey and Mitch. Let me find one on here. With Milro being over 75% completion percentage on passes while being blitz or pressure, do we have entertained blitzing? Or do we control the box with the front seven and safety play the deepest man from Vons Ferrelli? Well, good question. Stats. He said 76%? Yes. When there was a blitz, his completion percentage on the year is 64.7%. So he's completing at a higher rate when you blitz and a significantly lower rate everywhere else, obviously. So um, by those numbers, you would say, okay, let's get pressure with the front four. Don't bring a ton of people, like only bring four and hopefully align, the defensive line can get pressure, move the quarterback around and allow the, the secondary to keep guys in front of them and make tackles. Yeah, I, listen, you're gonna have to blitz. It's gonna have to be at a, to me, it's going to have to be at a low rate. But I do think part of the reason why he's probably been struggling when you don't blitz him is because you have confused him with other looks. So the last thing you want to do is give someone who is confused the same look and easy to kind of decipher what's going on over and over and over again. So you're going to have to bring it, but I think it goes back to kind of what I was saying earlier. Like, if you, you need to be able to get them into second and long – third and long situations, really second and long. That's going to play huge if you can start playing well on first and second down. And I think then you sit back and you kind of just let him yeah. throw himself in the trouble at that point. Yep. But, yeah. All right. Next one up. Considering all the smoke around Michigan, is Bryce Underwood going to be in BR? I think that's pretty safe to say Bryce Underwood is probably coming here. He's, it's January – is that when he, no, no, no. When's he making an announcement? Is it January? January 6th. January 6th. Never forget. I mean, I, mean, I think I'll forget, but yeah. Um, he, I'd imagine, he, I think LSU was already um, leading that race. And then with everything happening in Michigan, it feels like he's coming here. Uh, I think I'm confident in saying I don't think he's staying home. I don't know. I don't know if yeah. he's actually coming. Unless here. somebody else sneaks in there and like, yeah, like hey, here's a million dollars. Here. You never know what can happen from now until signing day. But hard for me to believe he'll be in um, blue and yellow. Maize and blue. Maize and blue. Maize and blue. There Maze and blue. That's the color. Yeah. There it is. Yeah. I don't. I don't think. I don't see that one happen. Anyone? Next one. Okay. Okay. I like the inflection. Yeah, thank you. Working on it. Ask Mikey and Mitch. Where's everyone watching the game Saturday? Okay. And what sipping on? Okay, so I like Scissor. this question. <laughs> Where I'm watching the game is a couple options. I may be at my sister's house in New mm -hmm. Orleans, or I'll be in our neighborhood somewhere watching the game at someone's house. I don't know whoever's having the shindig of where people are going to watch the game, but sipping, I'll be sipping, because I think sipping is the perfect word, uh, some whiskey. That's my drink of choice on game days, especially with the weather being a little chilly on the rocks. A little bourbon on the rocks. There's, there's a possibility that I'm in New Orleans for it. That's hey. not um, necessarily a go yet. Um, if not, I'll probably be, I'll probably be a couple Fred's? floors up. No, no, stay out of there. Yeah, I'm not going to do that. I'll probably be a couple floors up. I don't know what I'm drinking, though. Who knows? Some tequila. Tequila. Some that's, tequila. Tequila. That's probably yeah. there, yeah. Lloyd? It's Some Heineken great. Silver? Heineken Silver to start the day. Yeah. That's a, Heineken Silver, you like, when, drink it for a while, start? but when does it mix start? in? If the game is at 6.45 p.m., it starts at 6.45 a.m. You Get ain't going early. You're early. not drinking for 12 hours. Try me. You're not. You're not waking up at 6.45 First on off, Saturday. I promise you that. No, I'm not so going to be up at 11. Is when the first drink will be poured. I like to watch game day. So you wake up at 1045 ish? Yep. Okay. I'll catch the picks. I'll need to see Corso. Make sure he's it's a little warm body. And then we'll get going for the. I usually get a little. brush with the Heineken? Mm hmm. Okay. Yeah, brush your teeth, spit it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you get go. Get going. Okay. And then for a 645 game, it's a, 
Whiskey. What kind what? of day? What? What? Tequila. No mixer though. No, I don't even use ice. <laughs> well, I do. Let it. I like it on the rocks. Let it make like it. it let it make its own gravy. I don't like it neat. Yeah. Pussy. You got any more before we get to our guest? We do, but I feel like it's time. Any good ones? We have any? If there's a good one in there that we really there's need, there's a talk. couple silly ones. Somebody said I can't read, which is not true. Thirty-five on the ACT in reading. I missed one. Don't know which one, but. Well, that's not what that means. Having a thirty-five doesn't mean that you just missed one. It just means that on the reading. No, it's not. There's not thirty-six. There's not just thirty-six questions on. Well, I didn't miss half of one. No, but my point is like you can miss a few and it'd be one like point of the ACT. That's not how that works. Do you, you know do that? Do you remember what you had outside of like the 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 whole ACT? Do you remember subject to subject? No. Why do you remember that? Because it was so close to 36, and I knew that was like as good as you can. I made a 23, and I was very happy with that. I think, I, was, I, think I made a 24, and I fell asleep during the reading section, so it wasn't mm. good. So oh, I, was I like, took you know five what? inch for the first time. And you know I what? I'm not going to do this again. Percolating. <laughs> this is good enough. <laughs> get me out of here. I made a 23. That's what I made. That's all you needed to get into That's Alabama. Or LSU. No. Standards a little bit higher here. Um, all right. That's all we got for Ask Mikey Mitch. Like I said, Ask Mikey Mitch is brought to you by our friends at Heineken Silver. The real reason why we're excited about our show today is because we got a little baseball conversation. Baseball is going on. Uh, Major League Baseball is happening, obviously. You have Game 5 of the World Series. Uh, not a very popular World Series, according to the viewers. Well, yeah, I'd say the viewers. Uh, 9.2 million people watched the first game of the World Series. 9.9 people watched the LSU-Iowa Women's Basketball Championship game, which is great for them, great for women's basketball. Uh, not great for Major League Baseball. It's, a lot, it's the least watched game one of a World Series um, in a long time. It's, it, it's not, it didn't even get to the numbers of the COVID World Series with no fans. So uh, not great, but... We're not talking about Major League Baseball today. We're talking about college baseball. And we're we talking, may be about, talking about that soon. But. Maybe. Not now, though. He came here. He turned them down. He but said, I'm going to but school. For now, but for now. I'm would going have been to a school. Ranger. Could have been a Ranger. Maybe you could have. No, you wouldn't have got a Ranger. Yeah, no, but, not, not here yet. No, not yet. <laughs> uh, Jake Brown out of Lake Charles with the Sulphur High School. Freshman. Lefty on the mound. Lefty batter. Left, left. Does both. How has been? How has your transition? Taking ground balls at second. Yeah, t- yeah taking Maybe. ground balls. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Boy, first lefty, second Allegedly. baseman, huh? Maybe. Good. Maybe one hey, trendsetter, baby. Uh, how has your transition been to Baton Rouge, to LSU? Obviously, LSU is a place that you've always wanted to come to. You turned down. I think you got drafted in the 16th round? Yes, sir. By the Rangers? Please don't. Ooh, he got served. Please don't. Please don't. <laughs> Ooh, he got Makes you feel so old, don't right, right, I still feel like I'm your age. I'm not, obviously. <laughs> um, you come here, you turn them down. What made you want to come here, one? And two, what made you say, okay, I think college is my route, not going professionally? Well, first of all, thank you guys for having me. Like, it's awesome to be here. Yeah. Um, to answer your question, LSU has always been a dream of mine. Growing up, like, watching the big LSU teams, the Alex Bregman teams, the Kramer Robertsons. Go back uh, a couple years. Go back a couple years. We're too old. Go back a couple years. We're too old. You deserve, you deserve every bit of this, sir. I'm yeah. young. No, uh, so – and then watching this past year, obviously the team that made it to Omaha, and I think it was 13 people drafted. And it's like, if I want to be a big leaguer, this is where I need to go. And it's the guys that are around me, the coaching staff, the teammates. And I feel like this is the spot where if I want to get to my ultimate best, I should be here. I love that. And I think, that's, I think, I think you nailed that on the head, right? I think college baseball now is – it's a pathway. So much more advanced, especially yeah. in the SEC. Yeah. I mean, when we were playing, it was, it was high level, high level. I mean, mm-hmm. 2011, they were still – a lot of guys that from this year are still playing now, but I think even more so now, it is a well, if you double A type caliber of talent. If you're doing it right, it's only getting better. Yep, right? that's that's how it's supposed to go. Yep. What's been the you new being here? What's been the, the the toughest thing for you to trans translate once since from getting in high school? Even about just the lifestyle and or on or off the field. Like, what's been the toughest thing for you? What's been so new to you? Probably scheduling. Like, being yeah. able to follow a certain schedule every day. Like, in high school, it's almost laid out for you. And here you're in charge of your own stuff. You know, you got to wake up, get your business done. Yeah, if you don't go to class, class, it doesn't matter. It kind of matters. Yeah. Uh, and then being at the field for an extended amount of time, I don't think anybody works as hard as we do right now. And I think there's a reason we're so successful. But that's definitely something that takes some adjusting to. Yeah. But, uh, it's not um, at all. On the mound, right? So, in, in high school, being a pitcher – 
mm-hmm. and being a hitter, um, a lot of people are able to do that in high school. Right. Then you make that transition to college, especially mm-hmm. at LSU where you're playing at a, at a very high level against top tier competition. Right. That number significantly decreases, right? Jay has always been uh, open to guys doing both. You see Jack Caglione out there in Florida doing both. You see, obviously, Shohei Otani doing it mm-hmm. in the big leagues. And it's starting to become this, this trend. How has that uh, transition been for you coming here as a freshman saying, okay, I'm going to have to get my, my swings and I have to develop as a hitter because to me, as a hitter, that's the hardest thing is coming as a freshman and adjusting to right. you know, the pitching at your face because the staff you have is, is ridiculous, right? right it's like yeah. you have to, and it's all lefties, mm-hmm. I feel like. So like you have to make that big adjustment, but at the same time, you also got to keep your arm in shape and keep your body in shape to be able to go in there and be able to pitch effectively. How has that transition been for you and how have you managed that? It's definitely tough. It's definitely a big step up from high school, especially some of the guys that will play. But all of our coaching staff, you know, Chief, Coach Johnson, Coach Jordan, all those guys really taking me and preparing me for the next level. Like, it's not so much of a swing adjustment as it is a mental adjustment, that in part. And it's just making sure to get all your reps in. Uh, it's not bad on the body because we have the best, I think, the best strength coach in the country and Coach Mack and then just getting in the training room, doing some recovery. And like I said earlier, it's all scheduling. Like yeah. if I can get in in the morning, get some throws in, get some mound work in or whatever, and then that afternoon be able to focus on the hitting part. Yeah, uh, It's not bad at all. And those guys, really, like I said, the coaches take all the credit. Like Love they're the that. ones that help me get it done. Now, we got a chance to meet you and your family in Omaha for the mm-hmm. first time. Um, we weren't exactly in the, 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 the greatest of places to be at the time, if you know. Oh, we're a great place, actually. I mean, we're in a great place. We're in a great place. We're in a great place for meeting people for the first time. Yeah. But right. anyway, I can only imagine, like, I never, growing up, I didn't go to Omaha. I mm-hmm. never experienced Omaha. I never saw Omaha, like, as a kid going into college. Being able to be there for what was a very special time for LSU, right. and obviously you were on the docket to be able to come here right mm-hmm. after it. Being able to experience that as a kid with your family there, what was that like for you and, and, and you and your family? And like, how did that help you to transition to this and understand like, hey, this is the place for me? Right, well, first of all, there's nothing like Omaha. It's Alex Box 2.0 when you're up there. I mean, there's 25,000 fans at every people game. People don't think that that's real. It's like, it's yeah, a no, real thing. Real. Like people think we just blowing smoke up and like, it's yeah. not, it's real. No, there's 25,000 fans at the game and 20,000 of them are LSU yeah. fans. So being there with my family, we decided, hey, we're gonna pack up, we're gonna go to Omaha to hopefully experience it as a fan before they get super stressed out. Was that the out. first time you've ever been? That was the first time I've ever oh, been. Oh, that's nice. beautiful. So. Uh, it's the first time that, or the only time that they get to experience it without being obviously super stressed out. Like they get yeah. to actually enjoy it. Yeah. And for me, it's my take at this is what I'm getting into. And then being in the stands, watching these guys get after, it's like I couldn't want anything else. Yeah. It's so funny you bring that up because we, like watching it, watching them at home is a little different, right? And that was the first time we were sitting kind of near the family and like to see them watch their kids on that stage for the first time and you could see yeah the, the how invested and how bought in mm-hmm. and it, it almost looked different than it did at home because you realize like no like this is the stage so it's kind of cool that your family got a chance to do that well it's play. crazy because like you hear that a lot right like i went to Omaha when i was eight right to watch it as a mm-hmm. fan now you were coming to lsu the next year right, right. but when in 09 my freshman year and we won it mason katz and jordan rittner we're at in Omaha as seniors in high school, knowing that they're coming to LSU the mm-hmm. next year because they want to experience it, right? Right. Cade Beloso grew up going to Omaha, watching LSU play in Omaha. And so, like, you see that a lot through Louisiana, right? These kids that grew up in Louisiana that we wanted to be at LSU, we wanted to play at LSU, we were going to go watch and play there as fans mm-hmm. and then get to experience it. I think it means a lot more for us, right? right? Yeah. Being from here in Louisiana to go and do it. So it's really cool that – one, we got to meet y'all there, and two, um, that y'all got to experience that. Um, if you didn't know it, they went to Omaha and won that yeah, championship. Yeah. They're, they're laying it on pretty thick. <laughs> <laughs> Never said that. No. Always calling us old as shit. That's what he's doing. Right? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Uh, I remember watching y'all play. I, would, I was supposed to go to Omaha for a showcase. I uh, turned it down. Had a family beach trip, okay. so I hung up oh, the cleats big that day. Beach there you trip. Go. <laughs> yeah. there you go. My parents said I couldn't go. There you go. <laughs> Nickel State can wait. <laughs> um, 
you're you're an outfielder, you're a pitcher, you play a little first base. Yes, have sir. you been bouncing around between the outfield? Uh, you know, I don't know. You're playing all three outfield spots, corner spots, and first base. And you know, how has um, you know you talk about your the scheduling adjustment? Mm -hmm. You know, obviously the ramp up in talent right. is is another thing, right? Mm -hmm. And like you you're coming into the defending national champions a uh, team that has a number one recruiting class in the country last year, mm -hmm. right? You all are, I think, top five coming in this year. You have a pitching staff that I believe is deeper than it was last year. And obviously you don't have Paul Skeens, but Thatcher's throwing 96, 98 miles an hour right now. You have guys that I don't think people realize, Aiden Moffat's throwing 99 miles an hour. Like you have arms everywhere. Mm -hmm. How has that adjustment been for you as an offensive player, as a hitter, to say, okay, I got to, you know, want to do this well or okay I gotta I gotta work on this really I'm just trying to better myself in any way that I can help our team win help our team like get back to Omaha as we were just talking about the talent's definitely there I feel like there's nobody as talented if there is then they're not matching and they're not working like we are so the talent's a whole nother level but really the adjustment it's just all mentality like hey I'm gonna do whatever I have to do to better myself to better this team and we have a good group of guys. I love that. I, I always wonder, like, from person to person, well, what it's did, like. Yeah, he did. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I like that. I, like I that. always wonder what it's like from person to person, what it's like coming to college for the first time, because it really doesn't matter how good of a high school team you are on, whatever it is. At some point, you get to college, and or if you were to go straight to pro ball, and you're like, all right, this is a different level. What was, like, your first moment where you realized, like, Okay, this is not definitely not high school ball. This is a little bit different right here. Ooh, that's a good one. Uh, probably the first day of practice, like <laughs> we're uh, we're taking BP, and I'm seeing Bear Jones blast balls over the opposite. Field they don't make many Bear Jones in high school. No, I'm, watch, many I'm watching school Bear teams. blast them. <laughs> and I'm sitting there like, <laughs> don't All leave right, that one here, there. Here it is. Yeah. Were, you right. his, were you in his BP group? That's not. Yeah, fun. I, I was in his BP group, and uh, <laughs> it's definitely nerve wracking because I'm not going first, and I'm seeing that like. All right, here we go. <laughs> and that's when I kind of – it all set in. I'm, like, I'm finally here. Let's yeah. go. Um, you have some sock, though. You got some – A little bit. You got some, you got some juice now. I imagine that's uh -huh. going to continue to develop, right? Right. Um, the outfield – you feel like the outfield is – you have the three guys that you feel like are probably going to get the first crack at it, right? You feel like, you know, Pax is moving around. You bring in uh, Bingham. You you have uh, Pearson out there who who played the outfield for you know two years, going on three years. But at the same time, I feel like there's a lot of opportunity too, right? Um, how have how has that competition been as far as getting on the field? Because Jay has shown over the last couple of years that he's going to give everybody an opportunity mm -hmm. to show you what, show him what what they can do, right? Everybody's right. going to get some at bats, especially early on. How has that competition been? You know, for us, I feel like it's a, it's always a good thing. But you know, I want to hear your perspective on, on competition in the outfield and, and some of the other position battles. Oh, our team definitely has a great competitive nature. I think that's something that Coach Johnson preaches to us every day. And it's like, yeah, this guy's my teammate. I want the best for him, but also like, I want to beat you out. Right. Right. So it brings out the best in all of us, and I think that it just brings elevated baseball. Like it makes everybody their absolute best every day. And so it's yeah. awesome. Look, you're, you're Lloyd approves of your answer. Elevated yeah. baseball is just like that's a high level answer. I've yeah. never heard Lloyd, those two Lloyd words back to back. Uh, uh, your answer is now obviously it's not when you come to college. A big part of coming to college is figuring out Halloween, staying so out of Fred's. We're staying in Fred's. We're staying in Fred's. Um, you know, when I got here, you know, I uh, came from Lafayette, so like you had to. You went straight out, to Fred's. Straight had, to Fred's. You had to figure out. Well, I got kicked out of Fred's a few times because I was too young to get in. <laughs> See, you I went straight to Fred's. In. I told and you. Jay just pulls right up. To oh, the because and just so excuse my friend here. He's from Lafayette, where you can get into the bar when you're 14 years old. So when you get to Baton Rouge, it's a little different. 18. I was 18. I know, but you Every can drink in, in Lafayette. You can drink at 18 in the I wasn't bar. Wasn't drinking. Oh, I was not drinking. Why'd you get kicked out? Because I was too young to be in there. I could, was, guys aren't allowed to get in, uh, uh, Fred's under eight, under uh, 20, 21, uh, 20. Anyway, my whole question. Sounds like you is, took it well. My whole question. Yeah, well, it's not good. I don't like it. Embarrass I love the stone body. face that Jake's giving. He's like, no, dog, I'm not talking about it. Embarrass me in front of all my friends. <laughs> uh, but when you get, like, when I got here, I had to learn 
how to live a mom. Right? Mm-hmm. I had to learn you kind of grow up a little bit. You, you're away from home. You're living mm-hmm. on your own. You got to go to school. You got to follow your schedule. Um, but you also got to have a little fun. Right. Right. How has that transition been off the field? Like, hey, are you having a good time? Are you enjoying being here? How was Halloween? What did you dress up as? All of those fun things that we love. Because, listen, we were known, baseball players were known for throwing a banger of a Halloween party. I don't know if that's a little thing, but we, we kept it going for a while. Right. So uh, we had a little team get-together. Okay. Okay, perfect. That. We had a team get-together. A bunch of the guys were all together, and I was a baby, so I just had the full onesie. You know, oh, you the whole onesie baby? Whole a onesie, literal baby. Whole onesie <laughs> baby bottle, all the good stuff. What was the best Halloween costume in it the squad? sounds like that. Squad? Oh, There's two really good ones. Zeb Ruddle was a nun. Oh. <laughs> so that was interesting. And then Josh, no Josh well. Pearson was a kitten mouse. A kitten mouse. Uh, take that how you want to take it. He was, he was a kitten mouse. A kitten mouse. Funny guy. I don't, know what the and, kid, uh, I don't know what that is. We need pictures after the show. Yeah, there's pictures. Yeah. We had, listen, <laughs> we had guys. We, we have had, receipts. We had guys dressed up as Teletubbies. And they had, to, they had to walk back from Fred's dressed up as the whole Teletubby squad. Right? Uh, I had to dress up. My your freshman year is usually like the most outrageous. Hey. Tickle Me Elmo was my freshman year costume. Um, Bo dressed up as uh, a bunch of different. I'm gonna tell you right now, I was never <laughs> so. <laughs> Lewis Coleman and Chris McGee dressed up as Walker Texas Ranger hey, and listen, his sidekick. I'm gonna give you a good one. Awesome. I, I'm sure you know about this, but you might have forgot about it. I was never a part of this party. Um, you were playing football. I was. So I'm not trying to like you know. Oh, I was too good. It's just, I wasn't hey, around. You had other, you had other but Alabama week. I yeah. do remember being <laughs> yeah. in the um, like compliance meeting at the beginning of spring, and I'm not throwing any names out. Mm-hmm. I won't. This will be. This will stay anonymous. But we did have a player. Compliance comes in, do's and don'ts. That whole meeting, right? And they're like, "Hey guys, so you know the social media thing's starting to kick up. We have some examples of things you can and can't do." Um, at that time, we had a player who decided to show up to the Halloween party in assless chaps. And it was every bit of that. <laughs> so this was one of the, uh, this was one of the, <laughs> it was one of the it's examples of, screen. this is a don't. <laughs> don't do that. You can't do this anymore because I think these things get out these Facebook days. Facebook has turned out to be not a fad. Yeah, yeah. I'm just glad y'all are not there. You yeah. know, full baby suit is where you need right. to stay down. Yeah, how yeah, how cool. is the personality of the team though? Like how are the new guys, y- y'all are coming in, right? Every right. year the team's different, right? Mm-hmm. The, the culture of the team, the feel of the team, chemistry of the team is different. Like you had a national championship mm-hmm. team, a lot of guys left, you had a lot of big you know, names gone. Right. You bring in a whole other group of guys, guys that were there, but still now trying to make a different role for mm-hmm. themselves, bringing in guys like you and transfers. How is the personality of the team? Um, how's the closeness of the team? I know everybody's still trying to get to know each other. Are you having right. fun? Do you all hang out together? How is that, how's that going? Uh, it's, it's awesome. It's great. We have a good group of guys. And I mean, when you're around these guys for eight, ten hours a day at the field and then you're hanging out with them off the field, it's like – it's almost hard to not merge with these guys, and now that it's all like brothers now already. And I've that. only been here for two months. Two months. It feels like Dude, it's longer than that. You're, you're pretty very even pretty keel, very, very smooth. <laughs> that's what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, you're pretty very. That's, 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 yeah, that's, that's a Mikey true. phrase. Um, what hitting or pitching? Big strikeout, big homer. Which one actually brings the mm. emotion out of you right now? That's a good question, but I think they both have their moments. Like obviously, when you you're down by two, you hit a three run bomb to take the lead. It's like, wow, mm. like you feel like the man. Like, oh, so you're like, telling us you're just giving us the, the buttoned up look. Okay, I got it. No, no, like, <laughs> that's what you can do. But, okay, but no, also, I got, I got, I got it. Also, you go out there, you get a big punchy to end the inning, throw up a zero, and you're walking back to the dugout. Like, yeah, like I just did you that. You kind of talk a little shit. You yeah. Know what I mean? yeah. yeah. You know, like you, you start to feel yourself a little bit. But I mean, it's really, it's whatever the moment is, wherever I can help the team, that's. What I'm, what's my mind's on? Well, especially if, if you went, like you said, you went to the College World Series, you got to see Gavin Guidry in that moment of the right. college, where he kind of took a second, like mm-hmm. took a beat to look around and take it all in. That's as a pitcher, like right. that's what you dream for, right? Yeah, that's your little Charles you brother in right there. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, you don't dream as a kid of being up by 14 and punching out a guy in the fourth. No, right. but if you paint the picture of I get to take a second here, right? Like yeah. that's that, that's a different. That's what kind I'm of saying. Dream. Like when you're in the top or the bottom of the ninth, and there's one out left, Bases and, loaded. and you get to win it all, you you have to take a second. Is that is that a cool feeling for you watching him, knowing like, hey, I was literally just playing either with him or again. I don't know if y'all played together right. at all in the summer, but like with him or against him last year, 
this is dope to see him on this stage, literally. Yeah, di- y'all later. are district rivals in high school, right? So we, we were district rivals. District rivals, but I mean, but, you know, in the summer circuit. No, right, 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 no, no, right, right, right. Yeah, right. but I mean, me, like me and Gavin grew up with each other, so seeing him right. on that stage, it's like wow. Like, yeah. and then also knowing that I have a shot of being there next year. Right. But I mean, you can't not be happy for the guy. Yeah, of course. If they told you you can only play one spot this year, not for the rest of your life. Second base. Year. Huh? Second base. <laughs> Where would you? What would you? Would you rather hit or pitch this year? Whatever can happen. You're whatever I need to do. Whatever I need uh, to do to win to make the team win. Help this the team is not win, inside right? information. We're. This is a just straight up question. No, like you even, love both. We're right? not even live both. right now. You love both. But like, if they said you could only pick one, which one do you do? And you don't have to answer it. It's just you know. Mm. No, you have to answer. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't. I don't know how to answer this without Whichever one like. Whichever gets me on the field first. Yeah, I mean that's it. Yeah. That's that's the true answer. Whichever one puts me on the field. When you were getting, uh, when you're like when you're going through the draft, were mm-hmm. they were you gonna be able to do both in pro ball? Uh, I had some scouts interested in one way, some scouts interested in the other way. Nice. So it okay. was it was, it was that whole. Rangers were pitching. Okay. That whole process, it's crazy, right? It's, it's unbelievable, <laughs> and it happens out of nowhere. Like you don't hear anything from. <laughs> February to April, and then the end of May comes around, and it's boom, 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 boom. Mm-hmm. Man, like, I don't know what to do. And what you, you set yourself, you set a number for yourself, and you right, said, right. So I was going to go, mm-hmm. and then, you know, some guys set the number and then falter and panic and say, Well, I don't want to go to school. So they go down. Or some mm-hmm. guys say, Set a number. I'm not ready to go. I want to go to college. And at the end, just make the number, you know, a right. lot higher or pull themselves out. Mm-hmm. How did that process go with you? Well, me, my family, my advisor, we took a lot of time on this. Like, we started thinking about it pretty early. And then once we set the number, it was like, all right. We had all the factors in, like, what it would take to get me away from my dream. And then what it would take to get me to turn all this down and take the next step. And pretty much we just stuck with it. It was like, it didn't matter how many phone calls we got. Like, we knew the worth, and I'm going to take a bet on myself right here. I love that y'all actually get to say my advisor now. Like, that used to not ever be a thing. It used to be. No, no, no. No, no, no. You used to be able to say my advisor. You couldn't say my agent. Now you can have an agent, right? No, you still can't. You still can't have an agent? Mm -hmm. You couldn't couldn't say my advisor either. It was like, it was, you could talk about, like. My uncle. People helping me with this. Yeah, like, Mm -hmm. but it wasn't like, oh, you couldn't just openly say my, like, it wasn't a, that wasn't a thing then. Um, For you, in that draft process, was it? Like, was it something that, look, I get it. LSU is a mm-hmm. dream school for you, somewhere you always wanted to be. The other opportunity arose, right. became a thing. It was mm-hmm. a possibility that I had gone there. For you, was it, hey, like, I really know, like, this is where I want to go, and you're going to have to do a lot to pull me mm-hmm. away from it? Or it's, I know I can do it here, or I know I can do it there as well. Whatever the best possibility is or the best opportunity is, that's where I'm going to go. Which, which side did you kind of sit on when it comes to that? I was more of a, I want to be here. It's going to take a lot to get me away from LSU. Just from the past, like I've grown up, like I said, this has been my dream my whole life, and I'm finally here getting to live it out. Yeah, it's, it's real because, like, people don't – That's a it's a big decision. There's a lot that goes behind it. And, you know, I'm sure a lot of dollars were thrown at you. A lot of money was in your, in your face and, and thrown, and people don't understand. It's like, man, that's a lot, but I know I always wanted to do this, and if I do this right, I can leave here with – times the amount that probably mm-hmm. was thrown at me at that point. And that's, it takes a, a real mature decision maker to actually understand that and mm-hmm. see that and then make that decision and move forward. So kudos to you for doing that. Yeah, right. man, it's a tough, I mean, it's tough, mm-hmm. right? Like it's a, it's a hard decision because, you know, when you get drafted, dude, you're not, you're gone. Mm-hmm. You know, like you're, not, right. yeah. like you're not just in Louisiana two, two hours down the road where your family can just drive up and you have some, no, nah, you're, Tricks you up a little bit. Oh, you're in it. Like, right. You're gone, mm-hmm. right? Which is which is chances nuts. are in a place you never heard of in your life. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And how much of it was? Obviously, you wanted to go to LSU. Like, if mm-hmm. you put your head down at night and you're like, "Okay, I got drafted. I'm thinking about going to this spot." Like, then you're still at the back of your mind is like, "Or I could go to LSU." Like, was that right. kind of like some of the deciding factors? Like, I just went to Omaha. Mm-hmm. I've seen everybody in the purple and gold. This is what I want to do. Like, this is more almost as close to the dream as Major League Baseball is in a sense. Right. Well, I think LSU baseball is just the foundation for Major League Baseball at this point. I think all the billboards, the powerhouse, like that's no joke. Like, right. this the is the best. This is the best level of baseball you can get. I mean, look at all the guys that have come in, right, mm-hmm. and and turned down money. Kevin right. Gall. I mean, I'm gonna go back, mm-hmm. back. Like, Predate him. DJ LeMahieu turned down a million plus dollars. Mm-hmm. Came to LSU, made 
made, he made just, a lot. Yeah, he made a lot of money. It worked right? out. <laughs> made uh, money. Let's just go with a lot. Yeah, yeah. Aaron Nola turned down a bunch mm-hmm. of money, made more. Right. Gosman turned down a bunch of money, made more. Bregman turned down a bunch of money, made more. Mm-hmm. Cruz, Skeens obviously didn't come out of high school, so that was a little different, right? That doesn't count. Shows the power uh, of LSU, though. Right, like right. he brought him over there, right? So you have all these guys that have had the opportunity to get this money and turn it down and come here, and I'm on the, I'm on the side of the fence of like, hey, if I'm that good out of high school, I'm going to be even better coming out of college, right, so that yeah. money is just going to go up mm-hmm. you know, through the roof. Unless you draft me in the top ten rounds, there's not many – you know, there's not – when you get drafted in the top ten, there's not many picks you mm-hmm. can improve on, right. right? But outside of that, I mean, you know, you, you, you've, seen the, you've seen the evidence. You've seen mm-hmm. guys do it, so that had to help too. Right, pretty much it's just betting on myself, betting on my coaching staff here, which yep. – no doubt they're going to do whatever it takes to win the national championship, but they're also going to do whatever it takes to let players live out their dream, get to the next level. And Coach Johnson does an amazing job. Did you um, grow up playing other sports? Yeah, I, I played football, basketball, and ran track growing up. Love that. All through high school? What a guy. No, high school, I no, decided that base, got you. decided baseball was my passion pretty early. And Did so you, you high school, I was all Yeah, I, it was all me. My dad hated it, but Yeah, so you played just baseball. just baseball at Sulphur. Mm-hmm. Right. Sulphur used to whoop my ass in football, coach. Y'all yeah, have we, some big dudes. Oh, we used to be good. Oh, they're not good. Y'all aren't good anymore. We're not strong right now. We're rebuilding. Okay. What a good answer. We, Great we got, answer. We got, you've been, you've been taught no, no, no. well. We uh, we got a new coach came in and he's starting to put his work on our. Hey, the foundation. I had one of my best right. high school games against Sulphur. Hey, I can't remember. Well, what, give me the numbers. I, it was four touchdowns. I don't remember what else went on, but four touches. You boy I saw the end zone a lot. Hey, I was pl- I was a quarterback my sophomore year. They were. They were. He had they had this big white linebacker. I think he played at McNeese. At Sulphur? Yes. <laughs> and I was playing quarterback, and I was a sophomore, and I was you know never wasn't a slider. I was a I'm a get contact, and I'm running, and I'm running. I try to lower my shoulder on this guy, and I'm running. All of a sudden, I'm no longer on the ground. And all of a sudden, I'm backwards, and I'm on the ground. <laughs> And my back's on the ground. I was like, so Sulphur used to, I used to be, you know, good in baseball. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we, my, I went to St. Thomas more, so we were in 5A for the years that I was there and mm-hmm. played job. But Sulphur, y'all are good. Y'all are good right, there. yeah, no, we have a lot of guys to choose from. We got a big group. Do you still like watching other sports? Like, yeah, do you still yeah, like, you like, still like watching yeah, yeah. football? Like, you're a fan of other sports? Right, right. Yeah, no Some doubt. baseball guys, you walk in a locker room and they don't think those other sports exist. And it's like, yeah. well, that's, that's not that much fun. Like, you should be able to enjoy – you know, right? Yeah, I like turning sports. the TV on and being into something. So, like being like, you go to the football games? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I go to the football games. Enjoy it. Yeah, it's great. How could you it's, not? How great is how it? Could you not? How great is it walking down and having to go to the student section, but then you get to pass the whole student line? Oh. Right. Do they still yeah, have that where you get to walk through the so gate? We uh, we have a system where it's like we have our tiger cards or whatever, like our school identification, yeah. and then we'll go to the side by the Lawton room. And yep. just swipe us in. And you go through the lot room or you still go through the side? Like through the no, stadium? yeah, we still go through the side, but we, yeah, we walk right past everybody. And they don't like y'all. Well, I mean, at the same time, you're also LSU baseball. No so, doubt. So they're looking at you. No, I mean, for sure. But sometimes they get a little drunk and they get upset because they've been waiting in line for a little while. And they right. just. Years old. And Mikey you probably say, said some nonsense to them. So they yeah. like, they start popping You say, off to excuse them. me, excuse me. And they get through this. And all of a sudden, you're now getting in there. And then. <laughs> There's an nowhere hour to later, go. They show up. Yeah, for you. At you. But it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's fun. Let's take advantage you, of it. You talked a little bit about, or Mikey brought up the change from last year's national championship team to this mm-hmm. year, but you bring some guys back with Milazzo right. and who's one of the funniest Trevi- human beings ever of all time. Yeah, he's awesome. Yeah. And Travinsky, like mm-hmm. guys like those that kind of carry on what you had. And I would say those were glue guys from last year's championship mm-hmm. team. Do you feel that kind of presence of what they brought from last year, bringing it into this year? Or is it totally different? Oh, hundred percent. I mean, these are guys, both Travinsky and Milazzo who have had all the college experience in the world. And then they're here. All. Oh. They're here, yeah. They've been here for a while. <laughs> uh, they're here bringing it every day, and it's like they want this just as bad as the new guys do, and that's what's awesome about it. I think that's why we're gonna get there again this year. Who's someone on the squad right now that from day one you showed up, and it's like, man, this guy goes about his business the right way. Um, you've basically stuck to them mm-hmm. like glue and following and understanding. Like, hey, I want to be able to model my work ethic or the mm-hmm. way I go about my business the way they go about theirs. Uh, there's a lot of guys. I mean, I can't even begin to name them all, but the one that stands out really is Hayden. It's like every day I try to get there earlier than everybody else, and it's every time I get there, Hayden's in there putting in work, whether it's treatment work, whether it's getting extra swings before practice or anything. I mean, 
he's bouncing around, catch first base, getting swings in. He's he's doing it all. It doesn't, and it like you saying that, it doesn't surprise me. I think I kind of knew about that. I've heard that about him already, but people don't understand. Like that's how a guy who started the year hurt, wasn't playing very much. That's how when he gets an opportunity three fourths of the way mm-hmm. into the season, he literally hits the ground running like that. And it becomes a very, very, very integral mm-hmm. part of a championship team because right. those guys didn't take the days they had for granted away from when they were playing. They always stayed in it. They, he was always a, a very, very, very upbeat p- player on the team. And yeah. it showed, and obviously, in how things kind of played out for him. Right. So I'll, I have this question, though, because last year they had a very pretty balanced lineup, mm-hmm. right? Right, left, right, left, the whole deal. Y'all are pretty righty heavy mm-hmm. now. Y'all don't have a lot of lefty bats, bats coming back. Yeah, bats coming back. Obviously, Pearson hits the swings left hand, you swing left handed. Mm-hmm. But as far as that, as far as y'all go, like, you know, you've got to feel pretty good about, you know, being able to go in there and say, I have, I bring a different dimension. Mm-hmm to the lineup and I add, you know, a lefty, another lefty bat in this lineup, that's going to make you feel pretty good. I don't know if you've noticed that or, or felt that or um, had any conversations about that. Uh, right. No, we brought in a lot of left-handed guys. Actually, like the freshman class has right. five, six, seven left-handed hitters. And, I mean, you look at the lineup and you can't really tell. Like, that never runs through my mind really when I'm playing. I'm just trying to go get after it. No doubt. That's a good answer. Um, but, I mean, for me as a baseball guy, like watching baseball, the fact that they all have a lot of lefties coming in as freshmen, mm-hmm. like that's going to give you all an opportunity to get in there and be able to like right, yeah, no doubt. give give Jay some lineup flexibility. Well, you saw Pearson last year. I mean, right. that's kind of how he wiggled his way into the lineup. It was like they wanted a left-handed bat, and yeah. then you keep playing, and then you it, find it yourself. It gives you the opportunity for lineup and matchup flexibility, right. honestly. Mm-hmm. And that's right. I, that's got to be something I would imagine in your mind that's pretty exciting because, mm-hmm. hey, you're a young one, right? You're here, you're new. There's a lot of lefty young ones coming up, but you realize – for a good team to kind of make it throughout the year, it's going to be really hard for us to do it with eight righties in the lineup. Right, yeah, We're no going doubt. to need some left-handed bats. It's going to have to show up at some point. Right. So it's got to be pretty exciting to you to know that, hey, look, there's an opportunity here. And right, you know, as yeah. long as I do what I need to do, I may be the one that's actually taking advantage of that opportunity. Mm-hmm. Yeah, any opportunity that I have to get out there, it's like whether it's being a left-handed bat, whether it's being a guy that can move, it's – Anything, Pinch run, any, anything, yeah, anything yeah. that I can do to get on the field and help the team. Because, I mean, like Mikey will tell you, when, when he showed up, it wasn't about lefty or righty, but mm-hmm. Mikey looked around the outfield and was like, well, shit, I'm going to have to figure this thing out for a while because there's some dudes out here. And only he reason did. I, only and reason he did. I traveled was because I, I could play all three outfield spots. The, the cream rises to the top, and he did. He found his way out there, and he became well, a went back to football. Part. Huh? Chad went back to football. Yeah, I hope. Well, yeah. They gave me a shot. It gave that's me a part shot. of it. Right. There you go. That's, a, that's part of it. They gave me so, a shot. So, you know, I mean, and he, he, didn't, he didn't let it go. My point is he didn't let it go no when doubt. he took the opportunity. 100%. When the opportunity came from. But, like I said, so understanding, like, yep. hey, there's things going on around me. I have to kind of be cognizant of what's going on and know where, hey, this may be my opportunity. This may be my end. Right. Yeah. No no doubt. Doubt. Um, are you a fan of baseball? Like, you watch the world? Like, are you going for the Rangers, Rangers or are you not? Uh, I was hoping the Diamondbacks would pull it out just because, like, they were exciting to watch throughout the whole playoffs for me. And then I hate the Phillies. Like, wow, why is that? Ooh, I, wow, this I, is why a is that? They didn't draft yeah. me. Me and my family grew up a Braves fan. So, oh, okay. Uh, so y'all got okay, that butt We were all the, Braves fans. You would so like our social we media had, guy. We had a little dirt on the Phillies going into it. Yeah. But, okay. Fucking TBS gets everybody every time. Right, it had exactly. me. WGN coaches right I had, there. They had me too. I had not get you if you are young here. That's what you get, right? Yeah. Well, now you get, you know, the – you know, Sunday night and Wednesday night on ESPN, you get a little yeah, bit of... Yeah, I mean... But, I mean, same thing. You're TBS, supposed to come home here. when you're in third grade and you pop on WGN Channel 12 in Alexandria and you watch Chip yeah. Carey call the Cubs game. Sammy Sibisa doing the whole Harry deal. Carey? And Chip Carey, his son, oh, no. who now oh, no. is a trader, a turncoat, and calls the games for the Braves. Wow. <laughs> that hurts you a little bit. Hey, it's great voice. For somebody who's a fake baseball fan, you know a lot. Well, yeah, it's weird. That's good. I was in Omaha too, by the way. Twice. You know who? You know who wasn't? <laughs> I wasn't Omaha. Boy was signing autographs in Omaha. Yeah. That's, yeah. A real, that's a real life story. Yeah. yeah. Bottomless. Well, okay. Hey, yo. I mean, hey. Take it easy. Mimosas. There. Mimosas. Yeah, mimosas. Okay. Yeah, bottomless mimosas. Uh, all right. So it's three to one, right? Series is three one zero zero. Obviously, as oh, good play. Oh. Um, you do you think Rangers close it out tonight, or do you think Diamondbacks? 
I think there's a good shot the Rangers can close it out tonight just by how hot they are. I mean, you saw last night the bats are just exploding. And, they, mean, almost, they almost little leaked it at the end. Right, no, I saw that. Yeah. I think but, they found uh, something. I'm about to love that the old Diamondbacks. I think the Rangers got lightning in a bottle right now, and it's going to take a lot to stop. Valdi's on the mound. Right. You know, you got the you got the ace. You got the got little, the ace that's healthy. You have two. The other two aces are hurt. So, right. and um, the right fielder's out. If you see the guy, Adolis. Adolis. to to date right now, where's the coolest place you played at? Oof. Ooh. I'd say the coolest place I played at was the Pittsburgh Pirates. PNC. No, 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 I didn't. Oh. I didn't play there. It was one of their minor league <laughs> facilities in. Oh, okay. In and Bradenton. where's that? Bradenton? Oh, the, yeah, the spring training facility. Yeah, the spring training That's, facility. Is it in Bradenton? In yeah, Bradenton. yeah. And, okay. I mean, that place is awesome. Yeah, the, like the the big field, right? Like right. The, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's they did a really good job. It used to suck. Pirate right. City no, over there. You like yeah, that? Yeah, it's awesome. Well, Pirate City. Yeah. <laughs> it's but about to get supplanted by they, Alex Box. <laughs> but they redid it and made it a lot better. That's mm-hmm. pretty cool. Yeah, no, it was a good time. It was Team USA, and we were out there, and it's like looking in the back. It's like how got how did you enjoy Team USA? It was awesome. There was what, it was like eighteen U. Eighteen U. Yeah. Did y'all go anywhere cool like spots? Did you go like overseas? You mm, go no, places? we were all in Florida. Like all of our games oh, really? were in Bradenton. Who'd y'all play? Australia, Canada, Taipei, Japan, Brazil. Everybody. The usual suspects. Right, yeah. yeah. Go ahead and tell me. Anybody that wanted to lose. Huh? Go ahead and tell me how you disappointed your country. I didn't disappoint it. Abreu hit the walk-off home. What are you going to do? In the gold medal game. We're in Tokyo. And Jose Abreu. Heavy Cuba. air in Tokyo. Mm-hmm. Huh? Heavy air. Well, it was in a dome. Oh. Yeah. Uh, Jose Abreu. I mean, Cuba has basically had Cespedes. They had Jose Abreu. They had Guriel. They had... Um, your glove. A bunch of guys. My glove I gave them. <laughs> <laughs> and we're winning 3-1. to one. We're in ten, the 10th tenth inning. And 3-1 uh, to one in the 10th? Jose Bray walk off the run home. I, I mean, I don't know what you want me to do. At that point, it was, I don't know who this guy is, but he can hit a little bit. But yeah. He had two homers. He had all four of guys. It was not fun. I'm 12. Yeah, that's a- yeah, it sucks. He's pretty good. <laughs> He's not bad. <laughs> yeah, He's okay. Seen worse. Yeah, yeah, it worked out. He's okay. He's okay. Yeah. Um, What's y'all's uh, scrimmage schedule like this week? You have Monday, I mean, a Friday scrimmage? Mm-hmm. We're Friday, Saturday, and then we travel to McNeese Saturday afternoon to play. No, uh, LSU football. I know, we play McNeese Sunday morning. So, so what time are y'all leaving, you think, on Saturday? Probably leaving around like four, so I, we'll catch the game. Y'all get right at the start of the game. We're gonna have it. Are gonna like stay in, a, stay in a hotel? Yeah, we're staying in a hotel. So they're oh, like, gonna be actually gonna, fun. Actually, that's probably the best way to do it. Are they gonna like? I'm gonna talk to Jay. Jay. Yeah, I mean, you gotta set these. You gotta set these guys up with a spot in like the the the, four the, the, the room or something with a mm-hmm. big screen. Like, yeah, no doubt. You Friends. think that he's, uh, he's got to do something, Friends. right? <laughs> right. I hope. Yeah. Hey, team meal. Team dinner. And don't you get, get some pizza or whatever it is that you want for team. Jay's going to be locked into it. You That's know what Jay's I was You know that. Twist. You know they're going to watch it. You know, you know they're going right, to watch yeah, it. So gonna... why don't y'all watch it together? Right. No doubt. If All right. Well, this is a we'll PSA for the LSU baseball team to root on the LSU football team. Well, he's Jay, your family. He's your dad. So why don't you tell him? I'll tell him. Okay. I might go. At, at dinner. Maybe I'll watch it with the team. You're going to like Charles. family. There you go. Yeah. Sit there. Be the bad boy for the game. I got to get an AV. Be the bad boy. Defensive no. replacement. Definitely not. No, never, just a bad boy. Maybe a pinch runner. That the last thing. This groin is toast. You're past your prime. Just a bad boy. That's true. Um, We're all past. And that. then when do y'all finish? I saw like, speak for yourself. When's the purple and gold World Series? Down. Speak for yourself. Uh, I think the purple and gold World Series is like the week before Thanksgiving. Yeah, right, right before Thanksgiving. So y'all are kind of y'all are in like the stretch run of, of fall. Right, you have yeah. a few weeks left. Mm-hmm. Um. Who has – and just the, probably the last question before I – you know, obviously I don't mm-hmm. want to keep you too, too long. We kept you waiting a little earlier, but – No, it's fine. Guys, when you came in, right, mm-hmm. you saw these guys, and Jay asked you earlier, you know, someone who's, uh, you know, maybe surprised you or whatever, mm-hmm. but when you walk in, you see this team coming in, you have all these freshmen. As a freshman, mm-hmm. when I was a freshman, you come with your career class, and guys you didn't know, you size up. Now, it's a little different now because the baseball circuit in high school is way different than it was when we were coming mm-hmm. out. And so you've probably played around, played with some of these guys right. uh, throughout, you know, the summers or whatever. Mm-hmm. But as anybody, when you come here, you said, okay, I saw this guy on TV or watched him last year. Um, and you come to school and you say, okay, damn, he's different than I thought or bigger or right. damn, he's, you know, doing things. I didn't think. Hit that, it 450. Yeah, I, I didn't think that, yeah, I didn't yeah, think yeah. That he could do stuff like this. There's someone as that's like kind of you. Huh? So, as advertised. Yeah. Right. Now, there's a good bit of guys. One that stands out for me is Christian Little. 
Like, I'm here, and I watched Christian Little. I watched him at Vandy. I watched him last year for LSU, and now I'm seeing him on the mound. And I'm like, that, that's real stuff. Yeah. Like, he looks like he's been got it. shoving. Like, he's been killing it. He's been yeah. having an amazing fall. And I got here and saw him, and I'm like, that's real. Throwing a lot more strikes? Because oh, yeah. that was his deal yeah, last year, right? Up. He'd fall behind, but he's – I think he's like 70% first pitch strikes right now. Wow. If you, you get him back to what he is supposed wow. to be doing and what he yeah. knows he can do, what's in there, it's Is he throwing more fastballs? He's throwing a good mix. I, th I mean, can't That really slider was a wipeout last yeah, year. Yeah, that's so a good – I mean, having the mix, I think the problem was you relied on the slider a lot, and right. then it's such a good pitch that it would get – he would get behind counts. Guys weren't swinging at it, and then he kind of lost feel of his heater. So having that mix, I think, is, is important. Yeah, no, he's putting some work, and he's looking yeah. really good. Good. Yeah. Love he came that. back. Huh? Reason he came back. No doubt. Because no he got doubt. drafted. Yep. No doubt. Um, well, dude, I appreciate you coming on the show. Yeah, awesome. Thank you. Um, we're going to keep – we'll hopefully have you on a lot more. You know, the fall will get done, mm -hmm. spring will start, and that's kind of really when right. Mike Dup starts how, ramping up How the year bit. works. Right. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> when Mike Dup starts ramping up. It's when we, we turn into a, a baseball of, show. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we have a lot of you guys on. So, like, right. you know, we, we like this. Mm -hmm. It makes us feel like we're still part of – something bigger right, no and doubt, like yeah. we can have locker room talk here and just it's a good deal so i appreciate you dude. yeah thank y'all for having me awesome. um no oh, thanks for coming on thanks dude coming on. uh anytime yeah, open for sure. forum man that's awesome. it all right dude sweet thank y'all enjoy Absolutely, of course bro man yep what, why are you smiling over there why are you big cheesing over there because hey, you talk about baseball you got something smart to say behind you yeah, yeah, uh, i didn't say right. it i didn't say it that's what he's doing what do you want to say you, you got a good read on me come on bro that's what i do appreciate you what i do yep that's what i do um stupid what was it what do you want to say nothing you want to make fun of me? No. I was, was making gonna... fun of us because he never saw us play at all. That's oh, okay. Like, I'm okay with that. I'm dead. No, I'm fine with it. He's it 18. Is. It was going to happen at some He's point. He's 18. Here's he was born. Remembered. He don't even remember when we were Legends when, never die. When was he born? Probably like 98. Bro. What? I don't know. It's 23. He's 18. Bro, I don't have to do that now. I'm, I'm taking. taking Mr. Man. I had a 35 on the reading. Come on. Oh, come that's on. math. So what's it's 20, not that what's, hard of Matt? <laughs> that's, he was born in 2005. Oh, thank you. There's your answer. Or four or five, depending on when his birthday falls, right? So Ask think about that. You'll get the when answer. we won it, when we won the World Series, he was four, four. or five years old, dude. He don't fucking know. <laughs> that's crazy. Crazy. I, I, got, I don't think I could give you one solid memory from five years old right now. No. Uh, no. I'm pretty sure he doesn't have it either, and he's. I'm sure I he was watching, was. though. That's why. Probably was. Look, Bragman was 13, 14, and 15. So, like, that's when he was in the – he was, like, the 9, yeah. 10 age. And then, you know, Kramer, and then that's when he was really – the impressionable On the tear. The impressionable years. Don't let me get hot. Hey, good. He's very trained very well. Tommy Kramer did a good job with him. He did. He did. Taught what? him how to – Hey, we're family feuding him. Get away through. Good answer. Good answer. Yeah, get, he got, got through uh, <laughs> the labyrinth. Some setup questions. I hey, to get hey, the, the boys are teaching him well too. You know, let's not talk about that party too much. <laughs> oh, I did. Got to get together. Small get together. Small, Small get, get, get together. A gather, team yeah, gathering. Yeah, team like gathering. Seems like they had some pretty funny costumes. I I would hope that they had um, more than just a team there. Mm -hmm. Seems like some things are mean? still going well there. Well, you know, friends that they made throughout the course Great. of their time here in the fall. That the refreshments, brownies and stuff like that. You know. Yeah, maybe Who some, doesn't like maybe sweets? some seniors too. Who doesn't like sweets? <laughs> no, everybody loves sweets. Or d'oeuvres. Or d'oeuvres. Yeah, desserts. Well, Gotta have some water with the sweets. Entrees. Yeah, something to wash it down. Whole deal. Come on now. It's great. Whole um, deal. I wonder where they had it at. Probably like Beaupre. <laughs> no, I think. They got you other, think it's dead? And it's yeah, not it's dead, not, but it's like... It's not that no more. It's not like it used to be. It's, it's no not... Way. They got, like, the, the new Lake Beaupre. They have, like, five different Lake Beaupre's now. I know. It's and they're all, they all in that area. all Burbank is Lake Beaupre, yeah. so, like, they don't even have to do that. They're all in the area. I mean, shit. And then you get the... The, <laughs> the grown-up Lake Beaupre is now the, wood, uh, the Woodstock, what, which yeah. is, like, down so. Nicholson, like, right in front of U-Club. That smaller neighborhood. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So you get like the guys that are at right at college, twenty four, twenty five, and then I think you have doing something. then you have that. Uh, there's a new na there's another neighborhood like off of right in the middle of Nicholson on like um, uh, you know like a little side street before you get to I forget the name of it. It's like um, it's a weird name, but that is uh, that's another like Lake Beaupre style smaller houses all that's next where to my brother week. lived. Yeah, I forget what it's, what that yeah, street's yeah. called, Let's but put it in anyway. ways. Um, Chick he was great, man. He was great. I think he's going to – He's excited. He's, he's having a really good fall from what I've been told and 
you know, guys I've talked to, and I think that those guys, um, you know, they're going to have – they're going to have a good year. I think that they're still trying to figure themselves out. I think offensively they yeah, haven't they been I, as I, good I, as they want it to be, but that's always – because I had four home runs in my career in between spring and fall before the season. I think they're going to surprise doesn't people, matter. dude. I, I, I really do. I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and say, yeah, they're for sure going to win back-to-back, -back, but I think the perception of the team is because they lost so many guys last year to the draft, right? And, and, and so many – That there's no way they can be as good. I, I think they're going to surprise. It's going to be a different team. Yeah, it's going to be different. You don't, you obviously won't have Paul Skeens, and that is no, absolutely no slight to what Thatcher Hurd can be or anything like that. But to sit here and say that we expect the the year that Paul put out last year to happen again, that's just not. Come on. Yeah. That's just goofy. So, they say Thatcher's ninety six, ninety eight right yeah, now. Yeah, I, mean, I believe it's not it. even. That's what I'm saying. I believe that, but it's like. No, no, I'm not, not saying like a parent of Paul. But the anyway. stuff and the numbers to sit here and say right here you at had an auto November win. one that that's going to happen again next year, that's not that's goofy, right? So, but I do think with the staff that they have, the depth of that staff, the ability to if they can keep that ability to throw strikes with that staff, they're going to be in way more games than what people think, and I think it's going to give that offense some time to kind of find an identity and then really come on probably later in the year. And you're right to say it's going to look different because mm -hmm. you had. Literally the first and second pick in the draft. You're not going to have as many home runs hit next last year. I mean, no, uh, this year. You're not going to rely on the long ball as much. And you're going to, but gonna you're going to kind of have, you're going to have, still going to get, they're still going to score runs. They're going to score them a little bit differently. And you're going to have some other guys going to step up. They're going to be deeper on the mound. They're not going to give up a ton of runs. The bullpen's, gonna, it's just, I wonder it's if, it's going to look a little different. I wonder if Jay is going to um, really ask these guys to run a little bit more than they did last year. I think so. Yeah. I really, I really wonder if he's going to push that a lot more and see if he can get these guys to move, the Paxons, the Binghams, some of these guys that can run a little bit, see if they can kind of, you know, manufacture some runs a little bit more like this year. It might look a little bit like the Diamondbacks look, where you got a lot of, like, a bunch of spry athletes that are young guys that can get up and go. Where you're trying to – especially when you talk about the offense, maybe not – because as much as we've talked to Jay and, like, pitching staff – and this is what he wants it to be, is ahead of the offense. But It should always be that way. It should always. It's like defense always ahead of the offense usually. In football. In football. Even, I'll tell you this. From someone very close to the program, straight up told me, if you are a left-handed hitter, you do not want to be facing them on the weekend. Like, that's how good and that's how deep they are with left-handed arms. So, it's, you know, it's, it'll be impressive. They said that their season. weekend rotation this, this year um, all could sign for $2 million plus in the draft. We're going to be slamming some unders. Like, yeah. They say that, like, the talent well, they have, and that's just the, the three guys they think are going to start, not the other three guys that could start. You know what I mean? Like, and now they you say Gage Jump. Jones figured it out. Yeah, they say Gage Jump's been very. Uh, Gage Junk? Gage Jump <laughs> has, been very, uh, has been very good. Yeah. He, I think he's like 92 to 95 from the left side. Like, he's been pretty nasty. Um, and obviously, you know what you got with Thatcher. And then Holman. Um, you know, came in being his number one pitcher out of the, out of the portal. So, they're going to be good. Uh, they say that Shores is going to throw this year, I think. Wow. He's going to be ready, like, towards the end, towards, That's like, incredible. the middle end of, end of, uh, I say they think. They're hoping right. he's going to be ready he's towards tracking. the end of the SEC. He's tracking that way. They're going to be, they're going to be careful with him and throw. But I think that they like their chance of him coming out, throwing out the bullpen a little bit, and then maybe keeping him. He's a draft eligible sophomore. Yeah. Maybe keeping him and say, hey, listen, you saw what we had last year with Skeen's number one overall pick, right? Friday night guy. This year, the Friday night guy is going to get paid a bunch. The weekend rotation get paid a bunch. He's like, you're going to be the Friday night guy as a junior. You're going to be in line. You're going to be. You're going to be in line for that too. Why don't you come back? Not just that know? too. It would make a lot of sense for him because I, I can only imagine after throwing for maybe a third of his freshman year missing the rest of that year, you're going to miss a good portion of the next year. It's going to be hard. Like. If I really had to guess, it's going to be hard for him to develop secondary pitches in his sophomore season. So right. it would make a lot of sense for him to be able to come back for a year three to be able to kind of put an arsenal together while doing it at the Friday night spot and really kind of flourish like that. So it will make a lot of sense. It, it'll be it's interesting, dude. It really is. No like doubt. I said, I think they're going to surprise a lot of people because the arms yeah. are special. No doubt. When no do those odds come out for college? Not, nah, I mean – February 1, maybe. Snagged him early last year. Yeah, I mean, they're going to come out. I mean, not anywhere near now. Not anywhere near now. 
if you want to grab a bet, go ahead and hop on LSU while you can. The model says. The model. The go model. look at the model. Go it's free. It's free. Which also makes me skeptical. MikeyMatuk.com. Which also, there is, uh, I don't own that, but. <laughs> <laughs> you got, wait. I know who owns it. You got it. squatters right? No, no, no. I know who owns it. I know who owns it. There's no website there, obviously. It's just domain. Um, uh, domain. I'm a little skeptical because we'll of the see. because of the price. We're 0 for 1 on There's models. no price. It's free. We're over one on models this year. We well, no, others. not models. That wasn't a model. That was, I think this guy tried to outdo himself. Man. He outsmarted everyone. Try to make it sound too smart. Um, yeah, I'm off that model. I'm my prop, the, the prop model. guy I look at, he's actually been okay. If I take them all individually, I'm probably doing better than if I parlay them all. I, I'm, that's my next PSA. I'm off the parlays. Me too. I bet I fell into the trap. I'm down. I'm, this this year because this of is, the this, I think this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go and bet all the props separately. And it's so I'm, hard to do on Caesars. No, no, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to parlay it with a definitely not going to bet the same units that I've been betting and say, okay, I'm just going to take a dabble with that, but I'm going to have all these. At, As the, real bets. Yes. Because once you bet the parlay, it all goes away, and then you have to go pick them all again. So I yeah. just, I'm lazy, so I settled for the parlay when I was like, all right, hit for it. Well, that's bet. why I do them all first, and then I do the parlay. Can you go back? Yeah. I should screenshot. That's what I should do. Okay. So that's what kills me. because You're like, being oh, lazy. Bet them all. Yeah, oh, one, one, Technology one, has made one. us so lazy. Yeah, I know. So Why lazy. Are you being lazy with your money, dude? Don't, don't do that to yourself. I got a guy. <laughs> road to 3K, how's it going? No, we're back on the road to 2K. Oh, yeah, me too. I'm back on the road to even. Wow, <laughs> It's getting a little longer. Like, it's getting a longer road yeah. too, I think. If you need any help with your bets and your picks, just Do go ahead not. and listen to us. Here. Or why do you think we're bottle hunting? Or or <laughs> listen to us and just fade us. And that'll give you a lot of money. But we're not that wrong. Or just wrong. don't try to put eight together. Yeah, at don't once. do the parlays are, that's what Vegas when Vegas sees a parlay, they're like, Yes, this idiot. Again. <laughs> Vegas sees the parlay, they're like, ooh, we how many take times? tonight. But here's the deal. <laughs> you hit one. You're now back you're back even. even to all the other parlays. It just takes one. Mikey, if you don't put in a parlay, Vegas can be like, wait. That, that guy's okay? my... It's not like I'm betting a... It's, it's not like I'm... boost just to him. Put it on not, his account. <laughs> it's not like I'm betting 100 bucks on this parlay that's going to win me a million. Like, I'm not doing that. Like, I'm betting... 50 you know, for 15,000. 10, 10, $15 on these parlays that I'm trying to win. And you know, doing five 500, whatever. Well, it's, you know, it's part of it. <laughs> Could you imagine hitting one, though? Coach, if I hit one of those big ones, everybody's going to know. Yeah, so oh, I know now. that. Vegas is going to know. Speaking of LSU baseball in Alabama. <laughs> what? Because that guy that was gambling. Yeah. Trying to, look, I have a certified winner. That's yeah, the you last think, thing they want to hear. You think, he was, you think he lost a lot of parlays and was like, I just, you know what, if I hit one of these, Vegas is going down. <laughs> They're pulling their starter. Oof. It didn't go well for him. It's Paul's just, throwing. I think he regrets that at this point. He's in jail. I think they all regret that at this yeah. point. The entire ring. What is, um, <laughs> such a clown show. What is? That that whole I mean, when you look at what is that ha- guy in jail? I mean, it has to be, right? <clears throat> What's his name? I don't know his name. I Me mean, either. He's a U Triple SA coach. No, we ain't. Not no more. Not no more. Like, he even <laughs> lost that job. You can't even no do high school. No. And, would, I mean, if you compare the two schemes, that like, that was the most cockamide scheme of all time. Excuse cockamamie. me. Cockamamie. Cockamamie. I tried to make it past tense. Cockide. Cockide. Put them together. Cockamamie. And now you have Stallions. I mean, it's been a wild year in college sports. So. Connor Stallions. What a name. Great name. Fake name. 100%. You think? Yeah. I mean, what, would you put it past him for this man to change his identity? Or at least know a guy that no, can I'm get him an ID? Past him if he's done this I'm much. interested to see what happens. This is, I think this is like unprecedented in college football, right? Like, this is never like to the extent of this to where... It sounds like it's worse than uh, the, the Patriots, uh, what was it called? Video oh, Gate? definitely it? worse than that. Video Gate, Deflate Gate. It wasn't Deflate Gate, it was the other one. But it sounds like it's, yeah, Spy Spy Gate. Gate. it sounds like it's been worse than that. Not good. Yeah, not great. Not, not ideal. Great. Not ideal. But not great, Bob. Not great, Bob. And then you have Dabo Swinney for Boy, five minutes. Hey, Dabo. If you want to know how to list a resume out, Dabo's got you. Unraveling. I mean, Dabo has done himself zero favors. It started with he when he got on his high horse about NIL. Okay, didn't embrace NIL. Now you're going to lose all these guys that you were getting. And now... You go and you lose four games, 
and you have a caller coming in there, and now the host probably should have cut the guy off, but I think once they get going, and so the guy says you should give your salary back because you've been awful and you've been losing, and then Dabo says how dare you, basically says how dare you disrespect everything I have done for you, I, be grateful for what I've given you, and your expectations are unreasonable. Well, hey, buddy. When you build a program like that, you're going to have those expectations. That's what comes with the fucking gig. So, Pal, I am the fucking I mean, gig. I don't understand. I don't know. I'm, o- I'm, off the- I'm over De- uh, Debo. Yes, I am over Debo. But I'm over Dabo's act. I was kind of over him when I saw him run down the hill. That's it. I've the been over him. The first time. I've been. Not, not through the whole, like the first time. I was like, yeah. How, yeah when, I watch him, when I watch him do that, how much do you wish he falls? Oh, I want, Bo- I want Vince McMahon I want style. Fall. Torn he- like I want down the hill. I don't even want to. I, don't, I, I could care less if he got hurt. I would literally just love to see him barrel roll and tumble down there. Just I mean, what if all he, the way down? It'd what be if, the best I mean, thing when do you retire it? Like, if he was continued to be successful, I mean, what if you get to Nick Saban's age at the ripe of age of seventy-two, still running down the hill? Still run down the hill? It's too much. Too roll much. down the hill? Too much. There's a lot of things. Hey, Chris Bruce Hart's in some hot water too. That was my mistake of the day. Okay, I won't, I won't talk about it. I don't think the water's hot. Either. I don't think you should play it. No, you can't. Can't play it. Talk um, about it for sure. Boy, that's um, in today's day and age. Not good. Not good. And I think... The cover-up's worse than the crime. Yes. A mistake. <laughs> honest. I mean, I'll say honest. A mistake. I don't think he meant it in that way, like, it, obviously, but can't say that. Yeah, One. He's not back good. At the, he's back at recess. And then he does the whole... We'll have it, you know, like that. At no part of the, the transaction. That's when someone says when someone says something like derogatory. Well, I have a friend who's this, or I have a cousin who's this. So what? Does at that make no you okay? No part of what happened did it did he do himself any favors? No, like at all. Maybe that's did wrong. you see the host? Oh my god! Eyebrow went up, and then he started drinking the coffee. I mean, to... if you're moderating that conversation, what else do you do? You can't not have a visceral reaction. Cut so that I hate that show, by the way. way. Me too, but that's the only way. I'll I ever watch it. I don't. Nick Wright. I don't know if that's re- anything about him is real. I don't like his Nick hair. Wright his. I don't like Nick Wright. He used either. to have like a fade, and now he, he has said, "I didn't know you were going to say all that." That's what he said. <laughs> <laughs> not good. Boy, that was not good. Um, <laughs> all right, let's get to the segments. That's Chris Broussard's <laughs> in a bad spot. That's tough. That good is luck, tough. Bro. Good luck. <laughs> oh, they left him out there on an island. And then he came back and said, I just want to apologize. And that was the worst part. Yeah, that's... That, <laughs> I won't play the sound. Um, I'm looking for the image of the host because that was the funniest part. But... <laughs> obviously, Chris Broussard stepped in it with the announcement of, was it James Harden being traded? And they got into a, sp- a spirited debate and he used some choice words that obviously do not play in 2023 or it, yeah. it's H- playground H- language. Yeah, yeah. does not a phrase age well. that should, you know, it's outdated. Yes. Outdated. And I think we kind of covered it, but it was an all time reaction by the moderator slash announcer of the show who just hits you with the single raised eyebrow. And to put it even in a different phrase, he made the, his apology where he like you said he tries to make a statement about has the, have they come out and said anything about it i don't think so i think this is one that they maybe just ignore and hope it goes away oh you think because he apologized quick enough like it's not a i didn't wait a day and it recycles again he did it within a span of a minute 30 seconds yeah, yeah. and got there so i think it's like okay this all happened in real time so it might be over but his apology of i had a cousin who was learning disabled and they just passed away a month ago. No, two months ago. And then he said, we put him down. And he's like, no, he passed away. And it was just this fumble of words. Yeah, Word salad where he it was panicked. like, I think he's lying. I don't know what the truth is. But without audio, I just wanted you to see the reaction of the Chris, host. Chris Wright. Is that his name? Nick Wright. Nick Wright. Nick Wright's uh, look is something. It's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just an all time. Wait, 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 keep going. And then there goes the coffee. Like, uh, I don't even want to look at you right now. I'm gonna cover my face. Yeah, yeah. 
I, and I'll not work about the cameraman, too. I think we should do a close-up here. <sighs> Got him. But I know it's not as funny when you can't talk about, not funny, but whatever, you can't have the audio around it, but it's just bad all around. But That's it was an all-time live so television So Mistake of Day moment. is brought to you by our friends at Dozy Place. And the Mistake of Day is Chris Broussard um, with his uh, fumble. Fumble. Yeah. And his scoop and score. Tough. The wrong way. Tough. Tough. No. Um, curtain calls. We have curtain calls. Curtain calls brought to you by our friends at Assured Partners. And, and me. Um, what we got today? Uh, I want to lead it off, and I'm going to give it to Captain Kirk. So, everybody knows Kirk Cousins goes out, blows his Achilles, done for the year, could be back at home or wherever he is and doing whatever he's doing. Everybody talked about how Kurt has been pretty much everything for that organization and that didn't stop once the Achilles got torn, right? You could easily understand if he said, you know what, guys, I'm going to go ahead and skip this Halloween party. I'm going to be at home with my family getting this thing right. Not only did Kurt decide to show up to the Halloween party that I guess the team and the organization put on, but he's there, middle of the field, signing autographs, and literally is – as accessible as it comes. Is that a fanny pack? It's a Kirk Cousins thing. That's what it is. That's what it is. He does so, get to do some stuff. But he's but, very genuine. I he's mean, very humble I mean, dude. If you got a chance to watch quarterback, it's this is you, you. This wouldn't surprise you one bit. But it's actually cool to see because you know. They're, they're, I would have liked a lot of other things he could have been doing. I would like to see him get creative with the with the scooter and do something cool with a Chris, like a Halloween costume or do something. I don't know how you would have done it, but you know. I'm not creative, so. I don't yeah. think that was. I don't like think Kirk the, is very creative either. I don't think that so was I, on the top of his list. No, I know. The week I know. <laughs> Halloween party. The wife. That's where I, the I creativity comes from. Either. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, he's class act. Great dude. Yeah. Um, that's a good current call. Lloyd, you got one? I do have one, and it was, I feel like it was unveiled today on social, mm -hmm. but the women's basketball team has got a little update on the new digs. They're rolling, huh? And it seems like championship, because champions pay the price. And when you see this, because uh, look at this thing. I mean, Kim Mulkey is a mover and shaker and doer. And this thing, she loves gold. Bro, this is sick. Sick. Look at that. Look at that. Big ass velvet couch. Velvet? Crushed. What is that? Velvet? Game blouses. Good but, for them. Yeah, I mean, they are deserved. It. You win a national championship, you get cool things. That's the way it works. That's the LSU standard. Can't wait to see what happens after LSU wins the next football national championship. What happens to the new toys they get? Well, a lot of pressure on the LSU baseball, huh? They want a natty. They got some stuff coming. That's that. People they just expecting. don't want to start construction and during practice time. Because you know what's more important than last year? This year. That's right. That's right. Uh, my current call is to Bob Knight. Mm. Hall of Famer, basketball legend. Uh, known uh, to have a very uh, low temperament. Right. Yeah, never got angry. Ever. Uh, mm -hmm. Won a lot of games. Won a lot of national championships. Never saw a chair he didn't like. Um, yep. Had a, great, had a great toss with the chair. Coached at a few different schools. And uh, changed basketball. I really believe that. I, th I believe that he was a, um, a guy and one of those, you know, Mount Rushmore type coaches in college basketball and changed the, way, the culture of college basketball, kind of the way it was, it was coached. And a lot of people have used him as a mentor in the coaching field. So uh, Bob Knight passed away today, All Saints Day, going on to be a saint. Or a Hoosier, um, Hoosier for life. Hoosier for life. The and, only coach uh, to ever go undefeated throughout the entire collegiate basketball season. Is that and, true? Yeah. My buddy's dad was in college when it happened at Indiana. And he's like, it was a riot. Wow. But uh, Calipari would have been the second coach to do it, but they lost. In the championship. Yeah. That's right. With an undefeated season. I don't know why I thought Wooden did it, but he just won consecutive championships. On, like a bunch like of 15. And, yeah. 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 Um, rest in peace, Bob. Rest in peace, rest Bob. In peace. That's all I got today. That's all we got. We got uh, the rest of Wednesday, hump day. It is uh, – what's the score of this game? 0-0 zero, zero still, fourth. It is 0-0 in the fourth. A lot of good defense. Defense. Play. Defense. 
a lot of good defense being played. Like uh, a lot of plays Broussard. being made. A little Chris Broussard. <laughs> uh, it was not good defense. No. Um, we will be live again this Friday, but from 1.30 to 3, not 1 to 3, one thirty to 3. So it's this not Friday. my fault. It is not Lloyd's fault. Um, I'm giving you a heads up. We will be 30 minutes delayed, which is okay. It's about an hour and a half show. We're going to have more previews of the weekend. We're going to have more gambling conversations, see how the model, what the model says to some of our uh, picks that we want to use. And, and listen, this weekend is all about the model. It's all about the model. And about this is a test case game. for the model. Test case for the model. And the way it's been working for me, if a guy has picks and he's been winning and he says, oh, I'm doing all this, I use them and they lose. So we'll see how the model works. Oh, boy. It's all model. Tell no about the gut model. model today, this weekend. And then when the model fails, back yeah. to the gut. Yep. Yep. Uh, so one thirty to 3 this weekend, I mean, uh, this Friday. Uh, enjoy the rest of your hump day. Hopefully you're recovering from Halloween. Then we're taking Missouri. And uh, look, the candy, just throw it out. You don't need any more. Throw it out. You already had it. It's going to hurt your stomach. Oh. Yep. Candy bars, what'd you give out? Power Rank, your favorite. Did we do this last week? Power listen, Rank, your favorite Listen candies. to what happened. Listen to how what we did. We had some great... We had some great Spro, we had a spro, we had Skittles, Starburst, we did that stuff. You had some Airheads. We had some chocolate m ms Suckers. Some Reese's, no suckers. Wow. Jelly Ranch, Ranch suckers. Reese's. Here's the deal. Are you kidding Clay me? Clay Moffitt and his wife come to our house, and we're doing this gumbo, and they bring over their stuff. In their batch, batch of candy, they had some chocolate. Also mixed in there, Cosmic Brownies, full Cosmic Brownies, and Debbie, like little Debbie cakes, like rice, like they had... Oh, the star, uh, star bite, star crunch. They had some things, and I'm like, "Wow, where did they get that?" You yeah, mean to tell me it. you didn't have the sour apple caramel sucker? No suckers. What? I didn't. I wasn't. A, I didn't like the suckers. No, no I see you buy what, what you want. Yeah, what I liked. Yeah, what I wanted as a kid. Yeah, the kids loved it. Because we yeah, had. Yeah, some, yeah, you just put something in there. <laughs> we <then>. actually <laughs> gave them, whatever. We gave. You nothing. know what? We actually gave out some almond joy. I was about. Oh to, my I, god! I, I don't. I'm just joking. I hate almond joy. So I pulled going. the almond joy from the bucket because I saw the kids. They were, you know, Not pandering joy. around. Candy it. corn out out. Even though a lot of people, for some a lot of people love candy corn. I yeah, it's it. a niche food. It's not a food. It's a niche candy. It's a niche food group. It's a food. You have all three layers right there. You have the. Top, the middle, and the bottom. It's literally. I'm never like not. I'm never gonna say. I'm never gonna like have candy corn sitting in front of me and be like, "Oh, those are terrible." But no, damn, I'm not choosing I'll, them. I don't <laughs> eat candy corn. I'll, I'll, I'll eat, eat them. them. I'll, I'll eat them if they're if they're there. They're I will not for busy. Just to be busy. Uh -huh. I will not. Do you, hold on to the. Oh yeah, I'm going. I'm going section by section. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Are you? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. Me too. Mm -hmm. I never eat the tip. Yeah. Toss whoa, that out. Hey, yo. Just tip. Okay, that's enough of the no, show. No, only everything but the tip. Oh, whoa, then we're going home. Uh, that's impossible. <laughs> yeah, we're going to go home now. <laughs> yep, well, it was good to see y'all. We're going to go home now. A little uh, safe stay of all days. Good, good. We got, uh, we got a great show for you on Friday. Enjoy it. We're going to talk a lot. Like I said, a lot of bets, a lot of football. Good, good, uh, there's, good, a lot of, there's a lot of uh, interesting matchups. A lot of, lot of conversations that be had on Friday. Enjoy the rest of your Wednesday. Uh, enjoy the rest of the World Series game. What? We should test the model for the game this week. Before we go into the weekend, so oh, we yeah. have a report. Oh back yeah, let's do that. Yeah, we'll have a we'll have a uh, progress report. It was free yeah. until now. Yeah. Right. What? Well, it could cost us money. Yeah. Right. But we'll try it. What's worth it for the people? I'm not gonna happens? bet. I'm not gonna bet a ton. Just see it. Yeah. So what happens if you? Buy um, this week? We appreciate all of our sponsors. We love all of our sponsors. Um, couldn't be here without you. Shirt Partners, Dozy Place, Land Rover Peretti, Evco Solutions. All of Cards them. Cards and Heineken. culture. Heineken. Heineken. Yeah. Always on top uh, of mind. Enjoy your Wednesday. We love you. Peace. Two deuces and a mouth Love. like Nixon. And happiness. <laughs>